Evening. Maybe we can start a few minutes if that's okay early. Welcome to the regularly scheduled public meeting of February 6, 2017 of the Township of Washington Township Council. Adequate notice of this meeting was given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by the Township Clerk to at least two newspapers in January. And this notice has been posted on the Township Bulletin Board and on the Township website. We have uh, another little note here. Please notify the municipal clerk for any disability requirements and attendance at mayor council meetings. Uh, I think it's also good we, we just locate the fire exits uh, through the double doors on your right and on your left. And if you could all make sure your cell phones are silenced, that would be fantastic. Thank you. May we stand for the salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a roll call, please? Yeah. Councilman Calamari? Here. Councilman Cassio? Here. Councilman Sears? Here. Councilman Ullman? Here. Council President Bruno? Here. Uh, we'll have a, at this time, a reading of the total list of bills. Total 2015 reserve. Sorry, these, these are following the list of bills paid January 1, 2017 through January 31st, 2017. Total 2015 reserve, $211,402.59. Total 2016 current. $4,212,746.24. Total capital fund, $24,951.11. Total animal control, $725.80. Total trust fund, $559 even. Thank you. Are there any questions? Anybody? We're good? Uh, no. Thank you. Uh, at this time, i uh, like an approval of the minutes uh, for November 14, 2016, public and conference minutes, please. So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. I'd also like a, uh, an approval of minutes for December 19, 2016, closed session minutes, please. So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Okay, thank you. At this time, I'd like to have a report of the mayor, please. Okay, Madam thank Mayor. You. Thank you, Mr. President. Good You're evening, welcome. everyone. Uh, I'd like to start out with uh, three grant applications that we're, we are making. Um, one is to, for the reconstruction of Colonial Boulevard. Uh, part of it, we, we did some of it already. Another one is to improve Woodfield Road, and the third one is for our, our Safe Streets to Transit program. Uh, waste Management Permit, permit Renewal. Um, I, I want to thank everybody who has been signing the petition. I think because people are coming up to pay taxes, that uh, the petition it happens to be right there. So we got quite a few signatures recently. Um, very important, our DEP meeting of the hearing with the DEP will be on April 27, 2017 at the Pascat Valley High School because they expect a very big crowd. And um, we requested 7 p.m. as the time, but we have, they haven't given us that definitely yet. Uh, GIF insurance classes every year, um, our insurance provider offers classes that we could take, uh, we, I mean the council and the administrator, and um, if you take these classes, you get $250 off uh, our workers' compensation premium. And I think so far, three or four of us have gone. I think Tom Sears, uh, Councilman Cassio, and myself. So I urge the rest of you to please take the class. There's a lot of them on the uh, schedule uh, that would really be helpful to the township. Commuter parking lot. Um, there's been some concerns in the past couple of weeks about the commuter parking lot and there not being enough spaces available. There are 39 spaces and 62 permits, but uh, usually it works out okay. But um, there are, have been quite a few mornings now with no spaces left. 
So please, if you have a sticker, make sure you display it. If, and if you do not have a permit, you, really, you can't park there. Uh, quite a few summonses were issued on um, the past week and a half. And I, I just think the council should rethink that when you give the permits this year, we have to figure something out. Recycling. Uh, waste management was a successful bidder for marketing our recyclables. Um, in January this year, you recycled 93 tons. That's paper and commingled. Uh, last January 2016 was 89 tons. However, on pricing, uh, we're sort of okay because the paper prices are okay, but the commingled, um, we actually have to pay them to take them away. So um, I was very concerned about this when we went out to bid, but it is what it is right now. And so I'm asking you to please recycle a lot more paper. Um, also, uh, we are going to have a shredding event in March. I hope it's going to be either March 18 or March 25. Uh, they'll get back to us with the exact date. Uh, the police department, they answered 546 calls in January. Five more policemen went to the academy for the central judiciary training that is part of the Bail Reform Act. In addition, the new live scan equipment that we were required to buy is purchasing great, is working great. Two police officers, Lieutenant Skinner and Officer Parcell, attended the stigma free training today as part of a grant we got from Care Plus and Municipal Alliance. And I thank Tom O'Donnell and Desiree Morgan for organizing this initiative. Uh, Chief Cooper uh, notified me on Saturday, I guess it was, that he received the nationwide results of the safest small towns in America for the year 2015. They're not finished with 2016. The list uh, of these safest towns across the nation uh, is a list of 250 towns. Uh, with the township of Washington being number 63 and Walter where I work being number one. Uh, congratulations to our police department for a job well done. Uh, also, Chief Cooper and I have been reviewing the e-ticket system uh, to possibly implement in the township. It's probably going to happen. The e-citation process has several benefits over the traditional pen and paper. And one of them, is, a couple of them are that the officers spend less time on the side of the road, um, there were less transcription errors, uh, illegible handwriting, and things like that. There's no need for the clerks to manually enter the information into the database. And uh, the uh, information uh, related to the traffic violation is immediately available. So hopefully we'll be able to implement this. I'm sure there are some disadvantages like the cost, but I, I think it's going to be well worth it. And it also leaves a lot more time for the policemen to patrol because they're not going to be on the side of the road so long. The solid waste collection ordinance um, is important to clarify that uh, the revised ordinance 16-10 only means that you do not have to use the per bag system. However, the garbage still has to be in sealed bags and please call your vendor if you wish to change the program you have right now. Golden Orchards, Hillsdale and Township of Washington. Plans for the township portion of Golden Orchards uh, have been submitted. You probably have seen a lot of work going on as you go north on Pasquette Road. After Northgate, uh, there's a lot of building going on. I met with the, our planning and zoning engineer uh, to review these plans. Uh, it shows six homes partially within the township and one totally within our border. Now, although these units are single family homes, the ownership is condominium. Okay, the homes are separate, but it's under con a condominium association. Also, the fact that they are poor, partially in the township raises the question of property tax revenue, which is said to be where the master bedroom is located. So, so far, we, we see on the plan that the master bedroom and those six homes, is located, six homes are located in the township. Uh, in addition, uh, there is one home that is not in the association. I'm a little bit concerned about problems that might arise to that, but uh, we'll be dealing with that. Uh, another issue is zoning. The township portion is zoned as double A, not PRTD, Plan Residential Townhouse Development. As such, um, the plans would have to go to the zoning board for a use variance, or the council would have to look at um, changing 
the uh, zoning to PRTD. Uh, so uh, we need to take a look at that. And I know there's some vacancies on the zoning board, so uh, we you also would have to fill them right away if you want to go the route of going to zoning board. Because the plans came in this week and we have 45 days to declare them complete or incomplete. Road department. The road department is continuing to deal with weather situations and other issues. Like, for example, on Ellen Place, when we had the Nor'easter on January 24, they had to be there um, to uh, cut up all the trees and open it up for passage into the school. They also were able to build a protective cover, cover for the generator transfer box uh, to block water from getting in there. And they've been cleaning out our storm water inlets on Jackson, Viola, and Pascap Road. Uh, sewer lines are also being inspected. Administrator actions, our administrator Grove has been very busy with end of the year issues, rollovers, payroll, purchasing, and projects. She's also a member of the Pascac Valley administrators, and uh, they went to a presentation on buying electricity in bulk, and also are reaffirming uh, the towns of not letting Verizon put those nodes on the poles. Fire department, I want to thank them for responding to a situation we had the other night during the night where we needed lights and thermal imaging cameras. Um, this is another uh, instance where the fire department does things other than fire. And they answered 10 additional calls in January. Ambulance court, they had 41 calls in January. And as I mentioned two weeks ago, the Corps is uh, looking into getting a new rig and will need the support of all the residents in attaining their goals. Uh, several months ago, I mentioned the wall of veterans where we want to actually permanently paint the wall to reaffirm our respect for veterans. And if you know of any veteran who lives in town, who did live in town, uh, and you would like to have them on the honor roll, please submit a picture and pertinent information to Bernadette. The Contemporary Women's Club will be implementing the project. I mentioned those Verizon network nodes. Um, they do not have any permission from PSE and G to use the poles. And if you please, if you see any Verizon trucks trying to put them up, please call the police department immediately. Uh, also, I'm looking into uh, the situation I read about with the uh, parkway and the wagons traffic up above us. And I'll be seeing uh, Mayor Pathali on Wednesday. Uh, Mayor's Wellness Program Healthy Steps. The healthy steps part of our wellness is going strong, even though the frigid weather uh, has uh, been uh, very, very cold. And Saturday, uh, we had an option. We could stay in the library and do exercises through uh, a D DVD. But everybody, they're, I guess, very hard, and they all decided to walk, even though it was very, very cold. Thank you very much. Uh, we only had two weeks in between, so my report is Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a report of the council now, uh, Dr. Cassio. Thank you, Mr. President. And as again, as always, the mayor's covered a great deal of uh, data that she collects over two weeks from the township. She has that, uh, that privilege to have all that stuff sent to her, and she's aware of what's going on, so I won't repeat. Uh, there was one situation in the township. Uh, happened uh, two Thursdays ago regarding a backup of a sewer line on Prospect. Uh, and Mr. Sears responded as a firefighter. There was uh, sewage in a couple of homes and we've had problems with that sewer line before. And it was, it was supposed to be maintained. Obviously, we have to look into that a little bit more uh, in detail. And I see some of the residents here and they'll probably speak to that later on today. But we're going to keep an eye on it and make sure this situation doesn't happen again. We have one utility in town that we deal with, which is the sewer, and uh, it's our responsibility to take care of that. And we're going to do our best for you. And um, other than that, everything seems to be running very smooth in town. Thank goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cassio. Mr. Sears. Thank you, Council President. Um, I'll start off with a warning about um, scams. Uh, this is the tax season. And people are getting calls, um, threats that this is the IRS, and uh, you're going to be penalized if you don't take out a, a credit card or a card to send it to them. That is a scam. The IRS does not call you over the phone and threaten you. You will receive a letter in the mail. Um, so please be aware of the fact that this is the season with the scam artists are coming out. 
and the IRS does not call you directly and threaten you, you'll get a letter. Trust me, I got one for $8. <laughs> uh, we had a problem with recycling up on Van Amberg. I got several calls. Uh, they collected the paper, but they left the glass and the bottles. Um, this was last Friday. Um, as of today, I, I did reach out to, uh, I think Bernadette is in charge, and gave her the house addresses of the um, uh, people that their recycling has to be picked up. Parking. Uh, and just so it's clear, that'll be done tomorrow. So if anybody's yeah. watching and they're affected by it, they can call in and add their name to the list. Thank you, thank you, Mary. Uh, parking, I received uh, a phone call and an email the morning of an incident where uh, people could not get into the parking lot. Uh, I called the police chief in the morning. He dispatched two patrol cars. There were a couple of people that um, should not have been parked in the lot. One um, was not even a resident. Um, I, I believe they were, they were issuing citations. Um, I'm going to submit a change to the um, chapter 223, the vehicle ordinance for parking. Um, we cannot have 69 spots and 35 people trying to park in there. We charge them an X amount of money. Um, it's, it's the other way. 59, I'm sorry. Spots, yeah. yeah, 39. What, uh, what I see is that we should be going forward with permanent spots, have them numbered. You pay for that spot, that is your spot for the year. What I'm also concerned about is after the lot was repaved at the north end of the parking lot where people would uh, back out to make the turn to come back out of the parking lot, two uh, spots were actually placed in that, that driveway lane. So theoretically, you have to back out onto Pascac Road to get out of our community parking lot unless the lot is open. So I'm gonna ask that we change that situation and open up that parking lot so when you do back out, you go forward and then come around instead of back out into Pascac Road. Um, it, it's a major safety issue on that situation. Um, I am going to start the Friends of Clark Field with uh, Councilman Carl Um uh, I'll be sending out uh, donations to help put uh, some um, cherry blossom trees in there and some other flowers. I actually worked with um, uh, a particular person for a grant, so hopefully we could get uh, a couple of thousand dollars on a grant to help offset the cost of uh, redoing that park um, over. Uh, just an FYI, the birds are back into the firehouse and they're actually pushing out the, uh, the side of the, the firehouse. We were there today cleaning it up. Uh, another note, uh, the library will be sponsoring a uh, read, learn, and grow situation out of the library. We are looking for a, a particular spot where they can come and train the kids on how to plant flowers. And um, so that will be uh, coming out shortly. We're looking uh, uh, for some, actually I already got some donations to help out the library for the kids. They're gonna be planting all sorts of vegetables and things like that uh, over the summer to teach the kids. Um, uh, the sewage problem on Prospect, uh, I'm just going to give you some brief notes. I'm sure the citizens will be talking about that. We had that situation in 2005, 2010, and now uh, we just had the uh, situation in 2017. Uh, I did ask the, sent the letter to the town attorney asking them some uh, questions on can this be alleviated? Um, have we looked into it? Uh, have we addressed the situation since we have uh, since it happened? Um, he suggests that we run a camera down the the pipe system. I believe that was already done a couple of times. I also believe that there is a situation in one section of the pipe, but I'm also concerned that why can't we install some kind of backflow systems in the particular households to stop uh, the situation coming in. Um, I particularly don't like standing in a foot of uh, sewage. Uh, either did most of the firemen that were there that day. So I hope that this can resolve 
and uh, we can put this to bed. My last project is I'm working with the Ambulance Corps for a rehab trailer. Um, I have already reached out to a couple of vendors um, that I actually met down in um, Atlantic City. Uh, the Ambulance Corps is looking for a rehab, uh, revap, uh, rehab fen uh, trailer, sorry, where they can move to a particular situation where inside the trailer will be a bed, there'll be some kind of uh, cabinets for supplies. Um, this way, if it's a major fire scene or a, um, a parade or something, the trailer could be placed at a particular situation and the Ambulance Corps can continue moving on. Um, I already asked uh, one or two people and uh, I feel <coughs> confident that moving ahead that we can get that for the trailer. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Mr. Calamari. Thank you. Um, to echo what uh, Councilman Cassio said, um, you know, everything that I had was already covered by someone else. So in order to get the meeting over to the people soon enough, uh, I'll forego my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calamari. Mr. Dolman. Uh, I would just like to uh, reiterate one of uh, the items that uh, Madam Mayor discussed, which were the calls by the ambulance, which were 41, as well as the fire department, which is 10. Uh, you know, I don't think uh, they receive enough credit for the efforts that they undertake. I know they're always looking for members, so if you're out there and have an interest, uh, if you could contact those two organizations, I think they're great organizations, as well as other volunteer opportunities in the township. Thank you, Mr. So, Holman. I think it's good that we talk about how many calls they go on because it's important. People know. Certainly. Uh, as for myself, I don't have much uh, except, uh, Madam Mayor, when I was actually on the phone with uh, waste management on these laborious phone calls to try and talk about the collection, there was uh, uh, a website that came up and, and they mentioned about if you recycle correctly, uh, you might be throwing things away that you probably could even recycle. And, and it'd be good maybe to look at that site because I, I know you're a recycling person. So we can look at that site maybe and see what it is that we can tell the residents to, to also help in the recycling yeah. program. There's Once something out there. Put out the, the, <clears throat> uh, information piece where it tells you exactly what number is on the bottom yeah. that you can recycle. It's more than you think. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and also I ran into uh, Mrs. Salvi over the weekend, who I've known for years, and we did have a brief library discussion. Um, and I'm just amazed at the amount of programs that the library offers not only to the, to the children but, but to the adults and the seniors. So I certainly suggest uh, anybody take a walk, pick up one of the pamphlets. I've also will ask, I believe her name is Laura, to come back again this year and talk to us. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> at this time, I'd like to open general public discussion. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman <coughs> Cassio? Yes. Sorry. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. <coughs> so uh, at this time, I'd like, you know, if anyone has any uh, questions or would like to discuss with the council, to please raise your hand, come up. We have a five minute limit. We'll try and be flexible if possible. And uh, also, please just state your name and address uh, clearly into the microphones. I think you can. Okay. I'm not really sure, but I'll say yes. <laughs> Unless Ken tells me no. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. As long as they both give their address. Okay. I didn't expect that. All right. As long as you come with each one a name and an address, and, and I guess if you speak separately rather than three at a time, that would be good. You said time. Yep. That's fine. Sir? Yes, my name is uh, George Toole. I live at 452 Prospect Avenue. I've uh, been in the town for almost 35 years. Been at Prospect Air for the last 17 years. I want to start off by thanking uh, Councilman Cassio and Sears for mentioning our condition. And while there were a lot of good points made tonight about good things that are happening and, and items that are being addressed by the town, I think our situation should be top priority. Uh, we've had now raw sewage in our home three times since 05. 
and uh, I'm just frustrated in putting a Band-Aid on our situation each time. Um, just got the estimate today. Uh, my damage for restoration is over $13,000 from Friday. Um, my estimate to redo my basement is going to be between thirty dollars and $40,000. And I really feel that funds should be allocated to correct this problem as was stated with the backflow and as a top priority, we have to find what the problem is. In business, I run my own business. If I have a problem, I find out what it is and I solve the problem. And instead of being a reactionary town, we need to handle this for a variety of reasons. Uh, the evaluation of the property. I have documentation. I have letters from two realtors, one very noteworthy in the town and also an outside realtor who told me, George, you can't sell your house right now. It has to be declared that you have a raw sewage problem and the house is devalued. Um, just the five houses alone in our cul-de-sac since the houses were built, we've paid this town over a million dollars in property taxes just from our five homes in the last 17 years. Um, also, you have the health situation. My daughter's expecting a baby any day. Do I want to bring a newborn child into a home that has this problem? And Tony can mention his health concerns. So these are some of the major issues that I feel need to be addressed by the town. Um, I also need documentation that the problem has been corrected so I can sell my home. So I, I plead with you to please help us in this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tony Napoli, 447 Prospect Avenue. Um, first of all, I want to thank the council and the mayor for giving this opportunity. And also, uh, Councilman Sears, who is by my side in my basement, and, and the uh, Washington Township Fire Department, who responded. Without them, I would be knee deep in, in sewage. Um, the police department and DPW helped out. We finally cleared up the, uh, the drain. Now, as you know, George had mentioned, recurring three times. Uh, it, it's not tolerable anymore, okay? This is critical. It's unacceptable. It can't happen ever again. The emotional distress of knowing that you're leaving your house or maybe going on a vacation and coming back to a sewage in your basement is just abominable. If you had experienced it once, that's enough. To do it three times, it's incredibly strenuous. I haven't slept. My wife hasn't slept. We think about this all the time. So this is not just a financial, which is very, very key, because we all rely on our homes for our retirement to downsize and sell, okay? When your kids grow up, that's, that's everybody's plan. Now that has changed, it's turned upside down. Um, George mentioned his, uh, his daughter's expecting, <coughs> excuse me, my son just got off two and a half years of chemotherapy. His immune system is very susceptible. I can't, I can't keep him in the house. What am I gonna do? Okay, the council needs to exercise their power and their financial responsibility and make this the top priority. I've read about funds being allocated uh, for $155,000 for Mountain. Divert that, okay? Backflow valves, okay, are required, okay? It is required and the town should fund that, okay? And then the final resolution to the problem. I have a report. Issue, you have it, WT2045, it's in your files. The recommendations were never followed, okay? There's, they never jet stream the, the sewer lines every year. That's never done, okay? There was never any um, notice or publication sent to the town people about proper handling of waste, no grease or anything like that. The report mentions dip in sewer line, okay? It also mentions that they tried to clean the line three times. They couldn't on the third time because it would compromise the pipe. There's something seriously wrong in the sewer system. And Prospect Avenue is getting the brunt of it. So I appreciate your time, and we really need your cooperation and put this to bed, and most, most importantly, give us a temporary fix for these check valves. We need them, okay? We need them badly. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Bruno. Yes. I'd like to just add. Can you just um, check your mic to make sure it's on, Madam it's, Mayor? It's on. It is. Okay. Okay. Um, I, um, let me just say that we did, the administrator and I, after it happened the other day, I mean, we put all the resources we could out there that day to help 
you and it's only obviously a temporary thing but we did talk about getting the whole system looked at um, because of the number of times I know the last time they found a mop in there I know that and something I don't know I, I'm, I'm just saying the last time um, this is what we were told um, but we do have to look at the system itself and see what's going on mm -hmm. um, obviously the line must be too low or, or not correct uh, but we will we are looking into it believe me we'll find out what's wrong okay. um, but I, I just was told the last time I remember them saying there's a mop in there or something. No, let me, let me just clear that up, okay? Mop strings, okay? okay. No one is getting a mop down okay. a toilet. May, may I ask okay. one question? I'm sorry, before we move on. What, what was the report number that you said? Uh, and when number, was it dated and who was it sent to? Okay, uh, it was sent to Honorable Mayor Janet Sopowitz, uh by Paul Azalina, uh, copy uh, the Lee Chin, the Township uh, Administrator. June 11, 2010, and the number was WT2045. 611, 2010, and the number was what? Uh, 2045. If it's not too much trouble, I'd like to get a copy of that before you leave tonight. Sure, you should have any files. Mary, I I have to, a, I'm I just concerned. I'll give it to the clerk and I'll okay, have Okay, I'm just concerned. Yeah, let's, let's just have another copy it. to make sure we all have it. So. I also have a copy of from 2005. Whatever, whatever documentation you have, please send sure. it to, to Mary and the administrator. She'll send it on to us. Okay. Yeah, I mean, mop strings. The report says clearly, you know, not a mop head and uh, residual uh, grease deposits, okay, which I can understand. Um, but right here, further cleaning could, however, be counterproductive if we run the risk of damaging asbestos concrete pipe, okay? It's the same uh, subject, too much pressure for cleaning the apparatus, okay? so. Uh, similarly with respect to the dip, okay, in paragraph 10. This is a problem. We'll look, we'll, we'll look at the report. We'll, we'll certainly have the engineer look at it also. Okay. I think we'll I have so. our, yeah, we have a, a, a engine, our new engineer, we'll have him look over everything. Okay. Believe me, uh, it'll be done. Before I finish, one thing before I finish, I really like to see from the town an action plan, okay? I'm treating this as a, pro, a major project with tasks, resources, target dates, okay? I don't want this to, to wither away to another meeting, to another meeting, to another meeting. I will be here for all those meetings as well as my neighbors. Here. Okay. And, and we want to make sure, and I'd like to produce that report to us. I understand. Please. Okay. Thank you. Sure. My name is Dr. Jermaga. I live 448 Prosper Town, Washington Township. And I'm third time here because of the same problem. So from a medical point of view, if we deal with problem, we solve the problem. We don't observe it. We don't check it all the time and check it and check it. We cure it and we want you to cure the problem. Check the problem is not an issue. You have to, you know that there is a problem. And, no, we, we'll look and at we ask you to help us. We pay taxes, we are good citizens, so we want you to help us too. Not only co to cover up and this time is mop, another time is leaves, another time is something. There's something wrong with sewer system, so either repair the sewer system or change the sewer system, rebuild it, because. I, I think only, it needs a major rebuild. Do, it's not, you know, not we just did maintenance deal, on it. Let him finish, Mayor. We're not, leaving, we're not, we're not, we're not uh, gonna live here for 100 years. There will be other people living here and they're gonna deal with the same problem, right? So please help us, please solve the problem. This is too much for us. I'm a doctor, my wife is a doctor, we deal with patients, we can spread diseases. They, they already, George is cancer survivor, he has a son which is on chemo. This is a serious problem, not only sewage problem, sewage problem connected with other problems, even maybe more serious. So please help us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, th this is actually the first time I've heard of this, so I apologize that it's you're coming back and forth. Uh, I, I will promise you that when we get the reports and documentation that you'll send to, to Marianne, she'll forward it on to us, and, and I certainly, along with the administrator and the mayor, will continue conversations with an engineer. I, I don't exactly know what the fix is, but I'm sure we will find what we can do and, and dig into it much deeper than it has been since 2010. Well, the most important thing is would be a check valve, would yeah. be the, the temporary solution. I realize ripping up a, a street and sewers and doing it, that's heavy construction, it's a lot of work. 
but check valves can be put on our property probably in a day, each property, okay? There's landscaping that has to be repaired as well, but it's excavation. The part is maybe $400, but you gotta go seven feet down to get the line. You have to secure the line. So there's no cave-ins, okay. so it costs a lot of money, but... Please send every, all the I information. Have, I also have a quote from uh, Paramus Plumbing for the, for the job. Okay, send, so. send, send all the documentation, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Can I just ask one question? Um, none of you have a backflow? No. no. Okay. We were denied less in 2010. Yeah, yeah. we weren't allowed to check yeah. the records. When we asked the last time, you said <coughs> no. You told us okay. no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to? Uh, yes. Hello, my name is Christine Murphy, and I am here, uh, I live at 959 Adams Place, but I'm actually here representing the Washington Township Swim Club. I am... Uh, I'm sorry, Christine, are, are, are the other two ladies going to speak separately? Or no, just, they're, gonna, they're just here to support, Okay, um, gotcha. and I will say that. Go ahead. Um, and we are part of the Washington Township Swim Club board, um, and we wanted to come today to talk about uh, cooperation between the town and the swim club and I understand that you guys are having some issues with your salt shed and a temporary structure possibly going up. Um, I myself spoke to the mayor about two or three years ago about a, co a cooperation between the swim club and um, the pool and at that point in time it was not it was not received. They At that point in time, you guys said that you guys had your own uh, enough space to be able to do what you needed to do. I know that a few of the councilmen, um, Mr. Calmary and Mr. Sears, had met with a few of our other board members as well, um, as recently as the last year or two. And we are here now because we understand that you guys have an issue with your shed. We have a piece of property that is 6.2 acres. We have a piece of property that is <coughs> extremely secluded. We have a spot that you could put your shed, your three-story shed, um, that would be in the back of the, by the parkway and by a piece of property that you guys own. It is a gated piece of property that wouldn't actually really hurt any of the neighbors around it. I live in this neighborhood, so I'm actually saying to put it in an area that I live. But it is 6.2 acres, and we are offering to work with the town to come with some sort of mutually beneficial solution to your current space problem. We have a huge parking lot. We are willing to accept your trucks. We only use the facilities um, for three months out of the year. We would be able to put up a gate at the bottom part of the parking lot and be able to work with you guys at the other parts of the field that we have. And we are really interested in doing this for you. As most of you are aware, most of the pools in the area, especially those that are privately held, have gone under. And there is a lot of different issues. We need cash like everybody else does. And again, we are really interested in working with you. And the other thing is, Mr. Sears, if we can come up with an idea about well, I'm working with the mayor and the DMF about having the trucks and the salt check put on our property. I can give you a nice space for a beautiful garden for the library and give you guys access to, the, to that area all spring and all summer long and the kids can come and there's a beautiful piece of property and you can have a beautiful cooperation uh, you mean uh, I, I, I will, a uh, garden down there and we would love to do something like that for the town. Um, and that's something that obviously would be our gift to the town at that point in time. So we are here, we wanted to come because we know that there are new people and we wanted to offer our services to everybody publicly. And um, all you need to do is give us a call. All of you know who I am, all of you have my information and uh, please be in contact. Thank you. Before you go, I, I, just, I just want to understand one thing. So. Uh, to work in cooperation, I understand you're offering the space and, and the land for the salt shed and, and maybe other things because we've always talked about fields and things. So is this a proposal that you're going to come back to the council and, and the administration with as to is this a rent, a rent, a lease? A, a we rent? can rent, we can lease, we can do a long-term lease. We understand that the shed is a temporary movable piece of equipment mm -hmm. from what we've been hearing from some of the neighbors. Um, with that being said, we can do anything that you guys want. 
in all fairness, I think you guys need to come back to us and tell us what you need. Because okay. we can come to you with anything that we have. I have 6.2 acres of property. All I use is the pool and a small piece of parking. And in all honesty, we'll give up a decent part of our parking lot and have our members park on the street for the two months if we have to, to be able to stay open, to be able to make the necessary repairs we need to, and to be able to come up with a solution to what is your problem. We have a piece of property that is secluded. It okay. is gated. So let's come together with some sort of idea on how to work this out. And if it's a land sale, we can probably work for something along those lines too. That's a longer kind of conversation and you guys have an immediate need and I have an immediate parking lot that's empty. So you come okay. and tell me what you need. Perfect. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to address the council? Can I slip back? Julie Lipnick, 184 Finity Place. It's an ongoing issue, we all know, but um, I travel Washington Avenue every day to go to work, and the double lane of traffic is now extending as far back as Jacqueline. And just today I was coming around the bend, and just as I did, three cars coming the opposite way over the yellow line, and they're beeping at me to, and the car in front of me to get out of the way. So I, I mean, it is really, really bad, but to see it going back as far as Jacqueline, it's really disturbing. I can't imagine how much further back on Washington they're gonna go. Thank you. Uh, I, I do have, uh, Madam Mayor, I know, I know I've asked several times uh, and if, if Captain Hackbarth could, could come and address the uh, the residents regarding traffic issues, and I know you said you were going to talk to him. I spoke to him at the ambulance dinner, and he said he would have no problem coming as long as you give him the okay. I, I think it would be a good, you know, show of, uh, of appreciation as to what we're trying to do with this traffic situation, not only on Washington Avenue and the double lanes, but the, the also the crossing yards. And I'll talk to him about it and get some data, and we'll. Can we please do that? Finally, and get get him here and have just a conversation so that everybody's aware and he's aware. Once yeah. Well, all. I'll talk to you uh, another time about exactly uh, what kind of data we you want to have here, and then we'll okay so get it done. Can, may I? Yes. Um, so I believe it was Councilman Sears. I I could be wrong. Who <coughs> indicated that he uh, noted uh, people parking next to the bus stop? And uh, when that was noted, uh, I believe the chief actually uh, did some observations. Do you know if we've done any observations uh, during these high traffic periods of uh, backups and crossing the yellow line? Well, and the in addition to you know uh, the chief with the morning thing, which we found that not to be true. Certainly. Um, they do hold a various excuse um, me but that was true i did witness it okay thank um, you i wouldn't anyway, have brought it up if i was there um we do have special details there i would have to get a report on how many when they had them because they do keep track of it so that's why i'll talk to uh captain hackworth and see exactly you know how many times they've been there how many they found they, they have been keeping an eye out. Mm -hmm. And also, with, between the commuter lot and the bus stop and all that, they've been gathering information. So, so, so hopefully next, next meeting, I, I just well, want to keep had, going on. Well, let me see what he has, what he has, yeah. I'll, I'll meet with him. Okay. Bob, I'll talk to you about okay. exactly that. All right, uh, we're still open public. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. uh, Marianne Osmond, 960 Adams Place. Uh, the one thing I will say, what I wasn't going to, you know, not forced to talk about was the tools and the other two gentlemen who talked, Mr. Tool and the other two gentlemen. I remember them coming all three times 
And the mayor is very well aware of the problem. She was a councilwoman from 2005. In 2010, she was mayor. And now, that has been a problem. And yes, uh, it's funny when the, the word the mop, the, that was a big discussion when, uh, you know, it wasn't a mop, but a lot of the council at that time who was sitting up there said, well, it was all the neighbors' faults. It, it was, you know, nothing wrong with anything. There's been a problem there, and those people have had, Mrs. Toole did her, um, I can sit there and remember her saying how much it cost her to do her basement the first time around. And it's a, it's a, it's a very bad situation. That just, all right, now what my question is, is uh, I'd like to know, Mrs. Grau was supposed to be going for her CPA cert certificate, and I'd like to know if she got her CPA certificate. Uh, Mrs. Grau, you mean, Mary? Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I was a CPA back in 1986 mm -hmm. to 1989. It's the CPA uh, a Certified Purchasing Agent. That's QPA. I mean, Q, I meant, I'm, I'm seeing it's QPA. <laughs> You're QPA. Did you go? Did you get your QPA? I took one course, and I plan to continue with my courses. Okay. And uh, because Matt was a QPA, I could be the acting QPA. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is there, is there, just so I understand, is are you, is there a point yes, of there the is. QPA? Uh, yeah, with the QPA, we have an ordinance, you have a uh, resolution for $35,000 for the wall for the fire department. Yes. Uh, and that's because of a QPA. Now, according to, I actually looked this up, it says, pursuant to statute as previously noted, and the office of the purchasing agent who, uh, who holds a QPA certificate becomes vacant. A local contracting unit may appoint a person who does not hold a QPA as temporary purchasing agent for one year from the date of the vacancy. Now, he left sometime in November, and with, or October, I guess, and with permission of the director for a second one-year appointment. Did we get permission from the director for a second one-year appointment? I do not believe so. And then it says, during the term of the appointment. I'm sorry, hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm no, that has to be done. Okay. All right, wait, wait. During the term of appointment of a temporary purchasing agent, a contracting unit bid threshold may remain at the maximum amount allowed, provided that the governing body has passed a resolution authorizing such amount. I looked. I didn't see anything. Has that been done by this council? And I feel bad for the fire department. Please, Mr. Sears, give them my, you know. But I don't see anything getting approved if all these paper. Are you talking about an extension of the, of the original vacancy? Well, his vacancy, he was a QPA, and right. he left. Right. And, and then for one year, one year you're allowed to appoint. Right, and then the second and year. And then the second year you have to go to, you know, you have to go and ask permission for that. Well, he, he actually was on, still on board with us even after I was on. We so had him on until February yes. of last so, year. Well, does anybody know that he was still on until February of last year? He does. I'm asking well, the council. Was he on as a consultant or? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we paid him? Yes. Okay. An hourly rate for finishing up <laughs> as a, as a QPA. What, what, did what you well, have well, two? Did you have two administrators at the same time? I'm not, I'm not sure what his what his title was. I'd have to look into that. It's something to, to look into about the second year. Okay. Uh, so so we need an answer. I, I I know you said you're gonna look into it. It has to be done. So you'll follow up for us. Yes, okay. absolutely. And okay. then you need a resolution. I mean, this is, I mean, you know, these are the statutes. I didn't make these up. And it said it may remain at the same amount, providing the governing body has passed a resolution authorizing such amount. Well, my understanding is that there was a resolution in place increasing the limit. This happened last year. Um, so, uh, again, it's something to look into. No. Well, increasing the limit of what, Marianne? Excuse me? Oh. Uh, Either Marianne, increasing <laughs> increasing the limit. The, the bid threshold right. limit is thirty six thousand dollars when you have a QPA. Right. It's actually forty thousand now. Oh, is it forty? It yes, because it gets it, it's raised by virtue of the uh, it's certain time, certain, certain every some four years. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, well, I really Marianne, one minute. Okay, uh, but you know you're you're allowing something that had bid quotes. I mean, they were just quoted. It says solicited quotations and and you're doing it and you're authorizing something for thirty five thousand dollars when you don't have the correct personnel 
sorry, I personally don't think that that's the right way to run a town. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Osmond, so you're, you're saying that because we don't have a QPA, we're limited at the 17. Well, the paperwork all isn't put together okay. for the right. QPA. The 17.5. I think because 17. No acting. Yeah, it might be higher than that now, maybe 20,000 or so. Is? What is, what's the, what's the, the new amount, higher it's amount? It's 40,000. That's and I believe that I am properly acting as a QPA right now based on the time. Okay, so we, we, we have it on, on, on our list tonight. So I think when we get there, we should address okay. Okay. whether or not we're doing it correctly. Okay. Uh, it's, so that's so that we don't take the other people. I mean, because it says one year from the date. Got it. A vacancy. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Farrar? William Ferrara, 2556 Cleveland Avenue. At the January 3rd meeting, Mrs. Osmond asked the mayor which trash contract did she use, bulldozer waste management. I think the answer was she didn't use either. Is that correct? Was that correct? Yes. I yes. might okay. have pulled up. At the following meeting, Mrs. Eisman brought up um, with, and had a conversation with the, with the attorney about uh, whether or not we're required to have, as, as citizens, contracts with a waste contractor because the town doesn't provide the service. And I thought the answer was you, we are required by state statute. So is the mayor in violation of the state statute unless she has a third contract we don't know about? Do you have a contract? Yeah, So you, you have a contract? Mm -hmm. a third, you do have a third contract. So there is another contract. contract. Okay, good. Um, I did uh, speak to um, Bulldog because he's my contractor today because we ran out of the purple bags. And I called them and they said in January they sent out their regular bills. So for this quarter, they're going to leave the system alone. They would like the, the customers to continue to use the bags for this quarter. And by the end of the quarter, they intend to contact their customers about going forward, whether people would want to continue with the bags or use another system. But just, they have not decided what the other system is. So that was as of this morning. Um, again, going back to the uh, January 3rd meeting, I'm sorry, I wasn't here to discuss it at the time. Um, you passed an ordinance that uh, authorized PNC and Oratani to be our bankers. Um, and I was wondering, and this goes to the Animal Control Fund. The trust fund in 2015 was charged over $7,600 for bank charges. I don't know which bank got that money, and if it was any, either one of those banks, but I suspect, given the millions of dollars that flow through their accounts, there might be some sort of a discussion about whether or not we should be paying bank charges on an animal control fund, which I think probably has a relatively minor balance. So I don't know what that changed in 2016 because the financials aren't out yet, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Also at the January meeting, you authorized some organization, I can't remember who, to be the lead purchasing agent for the town. And last meeting, you authorized some organization out in Huntington to be the lead purchasing agent for the town. So I don't know how many purchasing agents we need to be the leads. No, it's not a, it's not a lead there. The, resolution recited who the lead purchasing agent is right. the way it works is it's a cooperative it just it gives us more options for purchasing right. Right. without right. going out to bid there we have state contractors but mm -hmm. the law requires when you are involved with a co-op you have to adopt a resolution you don't have to do a resolution to participate in a state contract okay. so again it's just increasing our options um, at their no charge okay so okay, okay. Um, I also wanted to bring up the um, the recycling, um, expanding the recycling program. I think I, you, you talked about that organization. You didn't mention who it was, but I, I did mention in a previous meeting that there's, if you look at the side of your Florida natural uh, orange juice cotton, they mention an organization, I think it's recyclecartons.com, that will expand, help expand your recycling program and making orange juice cartons a recyclable item. So I don't think it's a recyclable item too, but I think the mayor had a good idea to certify, uh, uh, circulate to the town what are what is recyclables, what isn't recyclables on a periodic basis to uh, so we know, that people know what they should be recycling. Um, and the other question I had was with respect to um, 
um, excuse me, <coughs> I just got my throat caught. Uh, these grants that you had here, that you're all applying for, I looked at the one for the 139, that's like $300,000, is that grant for the bus stop and the project at the, Pascat Road? The $300,000 one is, is around the other bus stop. Yeah, is that gonna cover, what is that supposed to cover anyway? It covers a new lighting system, ramps, sidewalks, things like that. That's everything that's needed to solve that intersection? No, it's just no. Uh, something that would probably give us uh, more opportunity to get funds from the county and things like that. Okay. One minute, Mr. Farr. Yes, one minute, okay. My uh, question has to, uh, after the, I read the Pasquette Press and Community Life, and they had articles about the mayor's annual mayor's breakfast, um, and, and the mayor had a report, and I didn't report anything that happened at the, be at the meeting. I did notice that at the meeting, some of the mayors were telling about how the wonderful redevelopment plans, they're gonna add more traffic to our streets. Um, and I just question whether or not there was any discussion of the <coughs> problems at the intersection of Pascack Road and Washington Avenue at that meeting with the other mayors, because it wasn't reported on in the, in the, in the article. So I don't know, are we, are we attempting to get these people involved in um, our problem? Or the, should we at, vote to have the all of these towns reconsolidated into one governing body like it used to be 100 years at ago? At the breakfast that you're referring to, uh, the ch chairman, I guess, of the Chamber of Commerce does give us the topics to discuss. Oh, so we can't. So that wasn't one of the you know, topics. And you only were limited to how, how many minutes. So I believe so you no, weren't, weren't you no having a committee? Weren't, weren't you going to get in touch with the mayors or have a discussion with them regarding the intersection? Um, yeah, and, and also I uh, will see them on Wednesday. But we were we basically follow the outline that the chamber gives okay. us, and we only get a couple of minutes. Mr. Ferrara, and they give you up. like the okay. council president does one minute to go. You know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Before you start, I, I do uh, actually, when we have these resolutions, 137, 138, 139, they came in Friday in the afternoon and I did not get a chance to understand what they were about, so I would also like to discuss them when we get to that point, just so we know. Sorry. Um, good evening. Uh, Tony Plantamira, 808 mm -hmm. Robinwood Road. I just wanted to ask if there was any kind of conversation among all of you um, from the last um, council meeting that I came to, I uh, um, discussed uh, field turf and the um, various lawsuits that are taking place um, with the uh, defective fields that have been installed on some of the high schools and uh, in the surrounding towns and throughout the state. If any of you um, looked into that to see if our high school is one of the fields that could be investigated mm -hmm. to see if there is defects uh, in, in that artificial turf um, because we paid for that field. So I was wondering if anybody did any follow-up or you're gonna look into that because that's a s pretty serious issue. Um, I, we, Tony, um, okay. let me say, I'm happy to follow up, you know, reach out to them. But again, as you know, they're a separate body unto themselves. I think it would help a lot if some residents went to an occasional Board of Ed meeting also and raised it directly with them because I think it would mean more coming from residents than it's going to mean coming from a council. But uh, I'll certainly at least reach out to whoever over there and see if they have any plans to do so. Okay, thank you. Just one, one other point. There were quite a few articles, I think, after you mentioned it, and we're in the paper, um, and about the state who's involved in investigating some of them. Yes. Um, I don't have any information on the high school per se, but I have been reading up on the issues involved with them and how the turf is breaking up and things are whatever. So hopefully we'll have some more information in the next couple of weeks. You know, we've been very busy. But um, there are there is a lot of information out there right so, now. So uh, just so. Peter, you you will contact somebody yes. for an yes. answer. Yes, okay. I will. okay. Some some of the issues are from the original field turf mm -hmm. many many years ago when they first started this project. 
and looking up on Field Turf's um, website and you can ask them some questions. Those are the old types of field with the old type of crumb rubber, the ones that are curling up. Um, and supposedly there's a new development, but I don't know if our high school fits in that because they were supposed to get back to me. I, I don't really know the original date that that was installed. That was installed um, in 2000, uh, uh, fall 2011. Yeah, and the fields, okay. the fields that were still defective were supposedly installed between 2009 and 2013. Okay. So we fall within that range, so that's why okay. I brought that up at the last meeting. So we'll have a follow-up. Ms. Calamari, follow-up with you. Okay. Um, and then um, just to get back to the uh, intersection here, I've, I've mentioned it before and several other uh, residents have, but um, I really believe that my quality of life is very rapidly dissipating in this uh, Pascac Valley area. Um, I'm starting to feel that Washington Avenue is a highway now. Um, the use of the um, road is very limited as far as I'm concerned as a taxpayer and a resident. I barely use Washington Avenue anymore. I really, really do believe, and I know Councilman Cassio, you had said at one time that our intersection is a Washington Township uh, problem. I do not believe that. I believe this is a Pascac <coughs> Valley problem, this intersection, and it's stemming from um, basically a lack of neighbors who want to address this problem of this terrible traffic issue that we have in this town because of the backups that occur off of exit 168. But it is, a, it is such a frustrating thing on a daily basis to deal with this traffic. And it's not just Washington Township. Our little uh, hometowns are being decimated, I feel, by traffic now. And it's just the beginning of the iceberg, because I was absolutely really upset when I saw L. Woods go. I said, that's it. Um, and I, for the people that are listening, I don't even know how long they've been in this town, but I remember that I used to go get produce there with my mother, right where um, uh, Northgate is. Um, they used to have a farm stand One there and stuff. Time. And um, all that quality of life that we have is just going away, and I really wish that this county, this Northern Valley area would work together to try to resolve this, because I don't feel that Washington Town should be, should be fitting, footing the bill for this problem. It is um, very uh, disturbing to me to see uh, towns surrounding us are um, developing drastically their farmland space and this whole COA thing now for the, uh, the Mount Laurel decision is really like a form to me of social re-engineering. Um, they're making us have all this extra uh, volume of low-income housing and we're paying our taxes and I feel that all of us are losing our quality of life here. And I really wish you would press this issue much more and I really do wish I would see the, our chief, our, our police department out there issuing summonses constantly because it should drive home some kind of a Thank message you. to the rest of the people in this Pascac Valley area. Thank that you, This Tony. is unacceptable. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, can I just add some, what recently really even makes it more important, I don't know if you read the article about Montvale, that the highway authorities are uh, considering putting a north exit a parkway exit up there because of the traffic coming from New York to Wegmans and I guess going back. So that's going to be my main pitch on Wednesday because um, I want to know if they did traffic studies up there. And so the people going to Wegmans from the south, are they going to be coming, you know, where are they going to be coming from? You know, they must have some, so, and there's a lot more traffic going to be coming from there with all these units you're referring to. So, Madam Mayor, you know, on, on the next, I'm sorry. no, um, I just want to ask, on, on the next meeting, will you be able to speak to this? Well, Wednesday, yeah, I'll, I'm going to bring it up on Wednesday, okay. I have a mayor's meeting, okay. but um, I think it's even more, now it's even more critical with all the development you're talking about up there, and I know you had done some organization of those uh, developments. Yeah. But now with Wegmans, I think it brings a whole new. Yeah, yeah they had an ad in the paper for 700 
uh, job openings. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put a list together for Madam Mayor, for yeah. Captain Hackbarth, and we'll have this on it too, so thank okay. you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. President, uh, Tony, uh, you know, you clarified your, your position, and my position is not that it's just the township's problem. Uh, the only people that can help us with the situation between us putting money in is the county. We can't take checks from Hillsdale, Westwood, Park Ridge, Woodcliffe Lake. Yeah, they contribute to our problem greatly. And it is a problem that a lot of these residents with the traffic are presenting to us. We just happen to be geographically located at an exit. Yeah. I wish the county would give us 100%. But again, we cannot get money from any other town. Okay. Um, you know, and I think. Dr. Cassie, know, I just want to move on. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's I, I fine, know. but I, I want I got to clarify the position. You got your point. I got okay. it. So okay. That's Don't mean to position. cut you off. Okay. Thank you. Mr. President, may I ask the mayor a question? Would the county patrol that area if we asked them to stop? Obviously, if we can't get tickets written locally. Will the county You know what? In if, if it's okay, can I just close the session? See if there's anybody else, and then maybe we can discuss this. Mm -hmm. Tom. Okay, hold on, hold on. I just want. Is there anybody else? I think everybody's gone. Anybody else? Okay. So, may I have a motion to close? Motion. Second. Councilman Calamari. Yes. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Elman. Yes. Council President Bruno. Yes. Okay, so we do have current business. Uh, I probably have to break at nine, I assume, with the tapes. So let's start, add one right now, which is the uh, uh, conversation, uh, Mr. Sears, we'll pick up with you, that you had yeah, uh, The question is, can we have the county patrol mm -hmm. that area at particular times? Uh, so they can issue tickets to people crossing the double yellow line. Um, I know the our police department stretched out during the day with school posts and other things going on, but can we have county cops patrol that area? Well, let me meet with Hackbarth over some of these issues that we talked about <coughs> this evening, and uh, we'll see what we can do. That, that's one of the reasons why I want to try to get this grant so we could maybe you know get some more support financially from the county by helping out by getting this that, but uh, i don't think the other towns i think steve is right but, the other towns aren't gonna but the financial in. thing is they could for the intersection but i'm talking about patrolling the people crossing the double yellow lines and having the county there as a we're, patrolling we're gonna, force yeah we're gonna try okay yeah you know, Okay, so um, that kind of brought yeah, us. Yeah, that, that'll be on the agenda. Okay, so that brought us into section D number two, which is Pascag and Washington. If anybody would like to. Oh, sorry. First agenda. Sorry. He's, he's, he's Mr. Almond brought to my attention what, the consent agenda. We didn't finish the meeting. <laughs> I, just didn't, I just didn't want to go into the public, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Ken, can I go backwards here? As we say, backsies? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Individual resolutions. Uh, so uh, we do have one resolution, 17 slash XXX, which is the budget transfer. I put it on uh, uh, just to let everybody know, as I said last meeting, I just wanted to go through what it is where we spent. Uh, and Marianne did submit a package on Thursday, uh, a huge package. Thank you very much. A tremendous amount of information. So I, I I think actually, it was Wednesday, actually. Wednesday. I started to go through it, uh, and I will have everything done from my end. If anybody else has any questions, I know Dr. Cassio got it, but I will have it, and we'll finalize and put this uh, to bed at the next meeting, if yeah. that's okay. And just so to follow up on a conversation you and I had, um, you had said at last meeting that you had asked for this information. Um, I did go back and look. You had asked for it in connection with the 2017 budget discussions, not with connection to the transfer <coughs> resolutions. So that's why I was confused about why it was holding up the transfer resolution. Again, just so you. No, nope, I understand. Yeah. My apologies. Okay, uh, resolution 17 134. Excuse me, Mr. Bruno. Yes. I just want to make one comment about that and just a question to Mr. Pollard on it. Um, this is happening, I won't say frequently, but it's not the first time. I'd like it to be the last. Is there anything that we as a council can do to 
make sure that bills get paid in a timely way um, without being held up like this. Because, um, you know, vendors talk to me sometimes and they say, your town pays very slow. Um, and, you know, things like this can hold it up indefinitely. Is there anything we can put on ourselves, Ken, that says bills have to be paid, you know, within 30 days, within 45 days? Well, th this particular one is a transfer resolution, so it's but, not. But it's a but it's a bill that's waiting to get paid no, from the res from the these, transfer. I know these, these these go back to November, I think, or October, uh, and uh, there's nothing that uh, legally could be put on policing yourself. It's just yet you ought to be paying the bills when you know when they when they're due, and and uh, I guess the the only answer is the people who aren't going to get paid. They're going to start to complain, and I just hope that the uh, this doesn't happen on the color stuff, particularly with the special master. But you know, uh, it's it is taking quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, to, 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 to me, it just gives us a bad reputation yeah. as a town with vendors. Yeah. Thank you. That's it, Mr. Mr. Bruno. To, to that point, it's not only this transfer. There's there are bills that have been held up That's on a, on a right. consistent basis on the administration's part for years, and that's why. A lot of vendors don't want to deal with us. So this is a this is a budget transfer. This is a different animal. There's a lot of bills that are outstanding to multiple vendors, um, and it's gotten be a lot better. Okay. Thank you. But in the well, it's it's happened in the past, and sometimes it's not the administrator's uh, you know call. There are questions on, on the uh, on other parts of the administration. So it has gotten better. The vendors do fret ser uh, servicing. Uh, the township of Washington for that particular reason. So, thank you. Uh, okay, so I, I would like, if we're on that subject, to make one comment, uh, maybe two. Uh, one, I think this uh, was a poorly budgeted line item, and it left us for a total expenditure of $102,000 versus seventy-nine. The 79000 really had no supporting documentation as to why we were spending it. Ken did come back with 100000 25 for four different categories. Uh, we're over a huge amount for t and uh, I think we deserve explanations as to why. Uh, I spoke to Mary Ann, and we did talk about for the budget next year, Peter, to put different uh, you know, expand on the categories so we can better understand where we're spending and it'll be a lot easier and quicker. So, great. Okay, so that yeah, being. Can I comment a little bit on that? Just to reply, since you just raised something about, uh, you know, poorly budgeted and. and, and uh, well, no, I, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I, don't I don't. I don't. I'm just making a comment, uh, Mr. Paula. So when we get into our budget sessions, I think hopefully we'll do a better job of budgeting them. I'm just saying how it was done. What we said we were supposed to expect from each of the categories, and we but we ended up spending more on T and M. I'm I'm going through the the bills. I, I'd be happy to discuss it once I go through the bills with you next week because mm -hmm. I'd have I'd have a better understanding of what I'm looking at. But if if it's okay, if you want to wait till then, that would be fine. Yeah, I, I just you know if you, if you need an explanation for T and M, I can certainly give it to you. But no, I I do want it, but I want to yeah. go through it because there's other there's other questions I would have. So let's just do all put it all together. So we have it. I, th I think it'd be easier that way. Plus, I don't have it in front of me, so I apologize. Um, okay, so if we can go to resolution 17-134, we'll authorize temporary emergency appropriation. Uh, Marion, if you'd like to, I know you spoke to me about this on Thursday. If you'd like to just go through this again. Do you uh, want to move it and second and then have discussion? Okay. So okay. move. Unless, okay. Second. So these are some additional appropriations to supplement the temporary budget that had been adopted at the um, first meeting of the reorg meeting. Um, these items, there's six different lines you see. Um, five of them are based on unknown expenses at the time the first one was adopted. Well, I take that back. Four of them were unknown expenses. Um, one of them, the tax, uh, the health department was just um, in, in evaluating the health department needs this year, um, I missed something because we were, were, are, were very scaled back since last year, and last year had, the, um, had a partial of a health officer. It was also, there was a joint 
Health Department, so that one line just got lost in the shuffle, uh, that $2,000. Uh, and the financial services fee is a $5,000 fee for preparation of the budget. Um, I chose not to include it in the temporary budget because I didn't want the temporary budget to be um, uh, to not be passed for any kind of um, uh, disagreement as to who the person, the entity should be preparing the budget. I know there were concerns about whether it should be the Vinci firm or the May firm. Um, and regardless, the $5,000 line is the same fee for both firms. And again, we're funding the project, not the particular vendor. So uh, that's Mr. Uh, Bruno and I had discussed that. Does anybody have any other questions about the other items? You know, for public defender, apparently there's already been um, a greater need for pub public defender in just the short month, in just one month. Um, so that's why we had to increase it. Um, the tax collector salary and wage was to um, fund the situation where we have um, the new employee now. Uh, the police vehicle leasing, um, I was told by the prior purchasing agent that at the end of the lease terms for the two vehicles we lease for the police department, that we, um, would um, be taking the vehicles for one dollar that's quite different than the reality um, in fact the leases end and their disposition fees and we have new leases that we will be entering into um, and the municipal alliances are again it was a situation that i was not apprised of by the outgoing purchasing agent apparently there were some um, requisitions put in by the uh, director of the municipal alliance that were uh, did not have any funds in them and i was not told that that would needed to be funded and last year in the first quarter there was no spending by that by the municipal alliance so we're just trying to uh, let that program thrive until the adopted budget <clears throat> any questions yeah just uh actually it's not a question it's more a comment the financial services fee of 5k yes. um i guess <clears throat> i'm hearing more and more or it's becoming more and more apparent that the council funds the account and the decision on how that money is spent is made by the administration. I do think that as a council, there's some expectation that if we're funding the account, uh, or at least I would like to know who is getting that money and if there is a uh, question on the firm or the people, uh, and it's not just this line, but you know, almost any line, because at that point, you know, what's the what's the use of the council, or what is our role? Because I, I think we have a fiduciary responsibility to not only fund this, but to understand what we're funding, and if we have concerns about who is receiving those funds and why they're receiving those funds, that we can ask and question that and that we can make a determination should it be paid. So the you're withholding or holding back, not withholding, you're deferring the inclusion of that because you were concerned that there was going to be a discussion of Vinci or May. I think that's exactly what we want to happen uh, or that's exactly what I would like to happen. So. I am really getting a bit frustrated as a councilman, and it may be our form of government, but that this is just a fungible balance that we just dump a crap load of cash on the table and it gets spent uh, and dispersed uh, at the discretion of the administration. So uh, I, I understand that's the process. It's a bit frustrating and I'm going, just as you have raised it uh, with this uh, resolution, I'm going to raise it again and again because it, it becomes a bit frustrating that we are uh, impotent in terms of how this money that we are providing for gets actually spent. Thank you. Mr. President? Um, Sir? If I may, Marianne, could you please explain um, municipal Alliance what items, were these items put in the budget to be purchased and they weren't pay, or purchased or paid, 
um, or no, there was nothing put into the temporary budget for these for the municipal alliance at all, because nothing was spent in the first quarter of last year, and that's what the the gauge was, and nothing had been requested to me for these items. So what happened was. Um, Laura Rifkin had contacted me about a program for anti-bullying at the school and then in the evaluation with that there was also oh well there's an expectation that she gets paid a quarterly stipend and are we going to be able to do that so that's where I put the money in. Okay. okay. Thank you. And they also have a different fiscal year right? Yes. Yeah. Also Tom, Municipal Alliance is on a different fiscal year. Right. Which adds so, to some of yeah. the confusion but I found when I was going through the desk of the former employee, some paperwork saying there's no money in this. It was kind of buried, so um, that's what I'm trying to fix. Thank trying you. to make it right. Thank you. Okay, I believe we had a motion and a second for resolution 17 134 to authorize temporary emergency appropriation. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda. All of the following items have been determined to have the unanimous consent of the council and will be enacted in one motion. Should any item require independent consideration, any council member may have such item removed from the consent agenda. Are there any questions from the council or would anybody uh, like to have one of the items removed for discussion? Uh, not the, not the Cassio? Yeah, it's okay, go ahead if you want. No, 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 go ahead. go ahead. Doctor. I'd just like a uh, further explanation on the last two resolutions, 137, 138, and 139, and exactly um, the uh, expendable amount uh, for each one of those. And what part of Colonial uh, are we doing with that? Also with Woodfield Road, and I understand the um, the one uh, one thirty nine. So you don't have to really explain that. But if you can do one thirty seven, one thirty eight, that would be great. I'll add one thirty nine. So so the question is uh, uh, just the further explanation as to seventeen one three seven, seventeen one three eight, and seventeen one three nine. So seventeen one three seven. The authorization to submit grant application and execute grant agreement with NG, NJDOT, reconstruction of Colonial Boulevard. Do we know what section we're doing at Colonial part, Boulevard? That's part of it was funded a couple of years right. ago, and then we were denied. We're trying again. We're trying to get it back. Okay, to continue it. And then Woodfield Road. What's the, what's the issue with Woodfield Road? Well, we that would be the next road we're trying to get funds for. Okay. I have no, no problem with those. I'm okay with it. You know, we're trying. Right. And they're non-matching. They're non-matching? Yeah. Excellent. And can I ask, what are we doing with the bus stops? Or the bus stop? I prefer to say bus stops. <clears throat> What's that? The bus stops. The, the 17139. Well, yeah, we're it's safe routes of transit. We're trying to get funding that will help you know that issue with the sidewalks and ramps and things like that and also help with the intersection uh, excuse me Mary Ann, do you know if that money can be used for uh, land acquisition I don't know uh, the mayor was working with mr. Statil on yeah. it I didn't have any involvement in that grant oh, okay do um, so you know madam mayor I he listed a whole lot of, I'm, I'm not so sure land acquisition was okay. there thank you <laughs> so just out of my curiosity since I, I do stand in the bus stops in the morning this will redo the bus stop across from Seasons and, and the sidewalks? And what, sidewalks. What? I don't know about the bus stop itself because that's a New Jersey Transit item. I mean, it's a big number. Wasn't it a big number? I'm trying to see the amount. I think it was someone mentioned 300,000. Yeah, so 300,000. Because you're talking about yeah. a whole new lighting system, traffic light system there. So is it a traffic lighting system or a bus stop uh, uh, renovation? Uh, that's where I'm confused. It's, it's not the bus stop itself. It's safe routes to the tri to transit. Okay, so safe routes to the bus stop. So it covers sidewalks, <coughs> ramps, uh, the whole lighting. Oh, so uh, bus stop intersection there. improvements. Getting you there oh. safely. Okay. So that would include painting the lines, 
maybe Cross putting up those uh, the gentlemen that yep. used to come who we don't see anymore, those uh, signs that... Crosswalks, everything. You take your life into your hands running across. Can we do this also down at the bottom of uh, Spice and Washington because it's the bus stop there too? And maybe another pickup? year, but not this person. year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mary, Marianne, excuse me. If we get this this approved, how long? Um, what's the time limit on getting a project done? From you have from quite a bit of time. You have like two, two years, years, and then usually. you can ask for an extension. Usually. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully, by then. Well, well, hopefully, you know what? If we get this, things grant, would that come would be great. together, and, and then yeah. if we're going to do, redo the intersection, I don't want to put lights up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we get a grant for, tear them down, putting lights up. Right. I want to, I want to, you know, roll it in more to pieces, one project. More pieces come together, you know. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> Mask. Um, the when we talk about reconstruction uh, for both Woodfield and Colonial, is this is it basically repaving or is there more to it there's re repaving but he also indicated that there's a lot of sections that need a little more reconstruction than just repaving and we just did the culvert on woodfield like as a matter of fact by woodfield where we walk the, the walker club you know there's a, a drain there too that needs a lot of work you can see it you know so i think he's figuring those things in okay <clears throat> Anybody uh, wish to uh, remove an item from the consent agenda? Uh, not to remove, Council President. 17-136, yes. uh, which yes. is the bid for the firehouse wall. Yes. It's actually uh, quote, and, and I just, while well, after Ms. Osmond made those comments, I did some research as what I could on my phone. Um, and I found out that I, and I recalled that I was appointed in May. Uh, it was shortly after I had reached out to Mr. Uh, Cavallo about helping with doing um, the, res the quotations for the SOD project. And he said, while I'd be happy to help, you know you can be appointed as my successor. And that's, I conferred with Mr. Poller, and, and that's when my appointment came thereafter. But even if that wasn't the case, these, this solicitation was back in December. Uh, the quote solicitation, which was well within the time frame. Now that you mentioned, I remember we had to double check the timing, so it took a while to get the appointment. Did you, nine, you did you have a question? You almost by nine o'clock. Do you want yeah. to hold no, off? Did you have a question on this though, or no? no. Um, uh, Tom? Yeah, I was going to talk about seventeen one thirty six, but your time for them to swap the tape is almost there. Okay, I guess somebody's upstairs. Okay, so why don't we take a. Uh, mm -hmm tape swapping break <laughs> come back about seven minutes after mm -hmm. if that's good or nine minutes after thank you uh, let us continue please I believe mr. Sears was was uh, discussing an issue uh, yes. uh, resolution 17136 the quote for the wall um, that's the bid do we have a time frame maybe they're ready to go. They're ready to go. Ooh, that's even better, yeah. We, actually, this is the first yeah. company that we got that does the prevailing wage and all the other stuff that we need. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, that's part of 16-07, the ordinance. <coughs> um, the siding, have we did anything about replacing the siding on the firehouse? I thought we would address that in the conference session. I don't want to hold up okay. the consent agenda. Fine, well, that's perfect. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, I asked uh, Sue to put 1607 behind this one because it refers to it, and I didn't know what it was. So that's that's for okay. informational purposes. Okay, so does anybody else have any questions regarding the uh, uh, consent agenda and the resolutions uh, for unanimous vote? Just one question, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. 135. Yep. So there's the reverse 911, correct? And there's also Swift Reach. Are they the same? Yes, it's oh. Swift Reach. They're, they're the same. Okay. And that's. Swift Reach. Well, actually, <coughs> we have the one that we pay for because we have X number of minutes and we can do it ourselves. We can put emergency, non emergency. If you take the reverse 911 from the county, you can't do, you can only do emergencies, you can't do information. Okay, so this is the coordination, the coordinator of that function? No. You're talking about the 9 11? 
appointing coordinator emergency, emergency telephone, telephone system. No, that's our that's the PSAP. That's our strictly our 911. For incoming. 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 That's your PSAP. <laughs> okay. All right. Strictly in the, in the police headquarters. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else on, on the uh, unanimous consent? No? May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. I'd like to have an adjournment to the conference agenda now. May I have a motion for that, please? Second. Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. Okay, so uh, there's quite a few items. Some we talked about, I just don't want to uh, lose touch with some of them. So we can go through it quite quickly, I think. Uh, first, uh, before I, I go through it, I want to thank uh, Sue and Marianne for kind of rearranging the format. Uh, I think it works and it probably helps us keep us in control. So thank you, ladies, for your help. Uh, so the administration have staffing. Again, this is just a general uh, note as to last time we talked several uh, positions. I think everything was covered. We're, co we're okay. We hired people. We don't have any issues with staffing at this point. Oh, no, we're still looking. We okay. have, we've, um, have um, resumes that have come in. In fact, we most recently um, advertised for the court administrator. I have received one resume only. Um, we have, we are talking to a few other towns to, to explore sharing personnel and or other services in connection with the court system. Um, the Village of Ridgewood reached out to me and then most recently um, Paramus. So um, we're in talks for that. But the other um, positions, um, we are collecting the resumes. I have to go through them and schedule interviews. Something has uh, evolved with the, the purchasing agent slash payroll manager. Um, the way it had been funded in the past, it was the salary was loaded on the purchasing agent portion of it and not the payroll. And really the payroll is the bigger part of the job, for sure. I've been <laughs> serving wearing that hat along with a few it. others. Um, so um, I'm still trying to get an assessment of what that job really entails. Um, I've been doing the payroll and I might be willing to continue doing that. Um, on a going forward basis and just have someone do the purchasing assistant work. Um, so again, we're trying to, to figure that one out. The technical assistant in the, um, in the construction office, it's a little slower because it's the winter time, um, but we will be looking in, uh, we have a few resumes for that. Um, and as you all know, we increase the hours of the current, current employee to cover Fridays, which seems to be helping with any backlog. Um, so again, we're, we're, we have re I have resumes on my desk I have to get through. Okay. Is, is the court something we would consider, uh, when you talk about sharing, are you talking about uh, a shared service in terms of moving our court, or, or can we move our court to another jurisdiction? Well, you see the mayor shaking her head. There are there are various forms and animals. There's some where there's consolidated. I believe there's three towns in the northern, in the Pascac Valley that have a it's consolidated fine, yeah. court system. There's other versions. Village of Ridgewood, it has, is, they have high costs, so they're <coughs> looking to have us go to them, which is something that Madam Mayor did not believe was the best thing for the town. But they were, are still interested in possibly sharing personnel mm -hmm. to come here. Um, Paramus, I don't know what they're proposing. I, it came up in a, in a conversation just as myself and the Paramus administrator were leaving the, pat, the administrator's luncheon last week. He said, oh, you know, we have room for another town. My administrator just told me, and I said, oh, that's funny because we're, we're going to be in a situation where we need to do something. You know, can you get me some information? So we're just having some initial talks to just kind of feel things out. So, And what, what's the scope? Of our courts, I mean, is it traffic and? It's any uh, quasi. It's, it's uh, a variety of things. Domestic violence, they can handle. Okay. They can handle uh, DWIs. They can handle uh, traffic. They can handle assault. You know, simple things, non-indictable offenses. Uh, there, there's, there's, you know, there's a pretty good array of uh, 
offenses and there could even be downgrades from criminal court back down to the municipal court. So, I mean, conceptually it could be, you know, maybe, our, I don't know, I, I haven't been to our court, but if, I've been to some others. If you go to, you know, some pretty busy towns, they have quite, a, quite an array of, uh, of offenses that they handle. And, I, and my understanding is one of the drivers is how much volume do we have? That's, you know, for pricing mm -hmm. purposes. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have two sessions a month, two Thursdays. Um, there's a violations clerk that's a part-time basis, and the administrator has a lot of, a lot of functions to perform. It's, uh, you know, a certified job. Um, and um, it can be performed on a, on a sharing basis. It's done, there are many instances of, of one court administrator serving a number of towns. So it's, it's viable to do it that way. And the e-ticket will help a lot. And, and Madam Mayor, you're opposed to any type of consolidation? I don't feel that uh, we should have our policemen go to other towns because they would have to travel there and wait their turn to get on to testify. So I think in the long run it might cost us more money sending them other places because they're mostly on overtime. Um, it would be better to have the person come here and run the court here, um, you know, unless there was some really reasonable rate, but I don't know, the travel time, I think is, even to go to Paramps, just go all the way down there, it would be a lot. And I think that I'd rather have one person come here than send three or four officers there. Okay. So. Mr. President. Anytime we have a change of venue where they have to go someplace, it's very costly. You know, well, well, the other thing is just to interject. There's a difference where the mayor says if we are being consolidated with another town where somebody's calling a docket and it includes not only um, Paramus, but Washington Township, but then there's another possibility of just having exclusively the, of Washington Township Day where you wouldn't have as much waiting. But again, it's all things that we have to talk about. One of the newest wrinkles or, or possible factors is, again, the judge has a, an appointment term. And that was raised by Paramus. Well, how long is our judge appointed for? And it's through the end of 2019. So then you have to factor all those things in. Okay. I'm sorry, Dr. That, that's okay. Um, you know, there's also other things when we talked about this back in 2011 in our shared service meetings. We were talking about doing the court. And there's other expenses that are required by the state that the Township of Washington is not doing in their court. We're supposed to have metal detectors. There's no metal detectors here at all. You know, other venues have it. That's a big cost. That's a big capital cost. And, uh, you know, sharing personnel and, and information, that's a big cost. If we're only using a couple hours, why spend all that money? You have the physical plant, then you have your personnel. We can definitely combine and do a lot better. At one time, we were the lowest. We had the lowest court cost. If you remember the spreadsheet that we did, Madam Mayor. But, you know, when you combine four different towns, it's not even going to be, I shouldn't say, it'll be close or very similar to what, we're, what we may be paying now. And that information's 2010, so I'm sure there's more requirements at this point that we have to abide by. And the state dictates or the county dictates that, especially with now sending the um, actors, as they call, down to central booking down in um, Hackensack. So there's, there's going to be more costs. So we have to really consider consolidating with other municipalities, whether we share or they come here. It has to be done because we can't be spending this type of money for, you know, <clears throat> these minor minor offenses that's going on. So I think we really have to revisit that with other towns. The, the, one, the three up in, uh, I guess it's Montvale, Woodcliffe Lake, and I forget the other Park one. Ridge. Park Ridge. You know, they seem to be working very well, and it's all serving them, you know, uh, fantastic from what I understand. So we, we should revisit that and take a look at where we can save some money and make a better uh, better court system. That's my comment. Okay. Uh, anything else on staffing, Marianne? No. Okay, so you, you're you basically going to take over the payroll and then have the purchasing agent take over the purchasing? Is that That's what you're saying? That's the temporary solution okay. right now. That's um, I've taken on that role. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, the next one is Zoning Planning Board and Council Minutes. Uh, I don't know what we can do to get Zoning and Planning Board minutes caught up. Uh, this is a Ken question. Uh, council Minutes, I would, you know, uh, Madam Mayor, I sent an email 
to try and have Cornelia work a few hours to get this caught up. I mean, to sit here in February and approve minutes in November, it just, it's almost anticlimactic. I mean, you know, I started to read the minutes in November to approve them and it's, it just, you know, it, it something's, something's missing there. So can we, on the council side, have Cornelia, uh, I believe, uh, work a few extra hours, whatever it is, to take to get these well, minutes caught we, up? We had a discussion, the clerk and I, uh, this afternoon, uh, because I had approached her, you know, originally. Who? And, you know, Susan, when we talked yeah. about getting them up to date and asked her about trying to uh, look at the minutes and how we do them and what can we streamline in them, make it quicker and all that. And uh, I did. She did give me a set of minutes when I got here Saturday. They were here, and I went through them, you know, tried to see how many pages they take and all that. And over the years, it's sometimes they tell you, 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 you could summarize other times word for word, but minutes are, I mean, meetings are taped now, so basically, you know, we do get a word by word uh, kind of thing. But uh, in our talk today, um, Sue did come up with an idea about um, getting Word put by a license of Word to put here on this machine. So that, because my point is that every time like you take a vote and things, you know, Cornelia would have, to, the assistant would have to retype all that stuff. By do, installing this other software here, that would automatically go in, which would save a lot of time and a lot of repetition. So we're, we're going to discuss it further this week. You know, we just talked about it today. And um, I did authorize uh, four extra hours this week. Um, and, I, and we're going to time and see how much it takes. For, for, Cornel for Cornelia? Or four hours this week. Uh, for, yeah, Cornelia? for Cornelia? OK. okay. Well, yeah. you said not to use names. So I'm saying oh, we'll okay. use assistant clerk. OK. Dep you know, the assistant. All right. So that's what we're going to try out. And then we'll see how it works. It, this way we don't have to keep retyping everything. You know? So you're saying you want to put Word, Word document here from Microsoft Office? Mm-hmm. And then and just type, type the... When I, if you don't mind, then I could take the agenda and I could upload it. Like these are log notes. You can't, you can only type log notes. If you put up the agenda, I can actually follow the format and type in here. And then Cornelia, you could just change a couple of things. You'd have the basics here. You know, like she wouldn't be retyping mm -hmm. all these different things. So it was something I, you know, we yeah, talked we, about we today. We were brainstorming prices. to see if we could solve the issue. Do we have Microsoft li uh, licenses? Uh, a Microsoft well, we'd office have to get license? one. For, yeah. But for do we have? The, Susan got prices. Yeah, yeah. we have to do it. Do you, do you have them? You have Excel, right? Yeah, but we have to get. I have Microsoft. We have to get a, a new license. We only have so many. No, I understand that. Okay. But I think it would be a lot easier for everybody and quicker. So, so. we're pushing hard to get the council minutes caught up, I assume, yes. then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know, Ken, I don't know about zoning and planning board minutes, how that works. If that's, I don't know if it's our responsibility or is something we talk to the other attorneys about on those, on those boards, but I don't think there's much happened there. So just, just. We'll have to work on that one. <clears throat> Ken, work on that? Well, I don't work on it. I'm going to work on it. I know. I don't, I don't take the minutes and I don't work on them. I, I get that. <laughs> uh, my, I well, guess you can my, learn, Ken. I guess my question is... And is nor this, am I the attorney for the boards, either. Okay, so so then there's no... As, so yeah. you're, you're out of it, yeah. then. Okay. All right, we can move on to facility maintenance. Uh, we have the DMF. Uh, I received the mold report uh, late Friday. I looked at it today. It's... Um, as I indicated earlier, um, it confirmed the presence of mold um, through the wipe samples. The air reports were fine. Um, it did not include a remediation report. I went back to the, um, the um, gentleman this afternoon and I just had seen in my emails, I quickly checked before the meeting. He indicated that um, he was work, uh, would like to see some of the documents we had obtained regarding our own efforts to have the ceiling replaced to try to tie the two together. So I'm going to work with him on that. Um, the engineer has, got, has drafted a, a report regarding his structural assessment that he's still evaluating. It's not in final form yet for, for publication. Um, so that's that, and we have received a we received an estimate from the insurance company to uh, remedy the water damage in the ceiling and the walls. 
and um, we took a look at it. We said we believe it's a broader in scope. They enhanced it, and I believe that's going to be finalized. <coughs> I sent that to Madam Mayor for her review. So hopefully things will be moving soon. We did have the exterior work uh, done on the roof. They were not able to put a sealant on, which is a key piece because of the weather. Um, they're coming back to do that. So um, that's for the DMF building. Things are so progressing. The roof, the roof was, I'm sorry, say it again with they the They did the structural work. They had to um, uh, realign the drain and, mm -hmm. the, and, the, um, and the roof top. Um, they did that work. They have to put sealant where the drain is to prevent further leaking. They did not prevent it. When I asked them, I said, well, why didn't they do that? You know, they, they were going to come here, and they said, oh, it was the weather, but it shouldn't be an issue. Well, there was some, um, a, some residual water coming in because of the, the other day, uh, the other day's weather. So, you know, they're, they're, they're supposed to be getting on them to get out here as soon as possible okay. to get that fixed. Obviously, they're not going to get paid until that least last piece is done. Okay. <clears throat> I would imagine it would be next week because they have some bad weather coming up. We do, I guess, some next few days. Okay, town hall. This, town hall. This, there was just, um, just generally. I know. I think you asked to put this on here about the ceiling panel and the elevator. Um, yeah, I, I actually went in the elevator the other day, looked up, and and saw there's a missing panel in the middle. Yeah, there's a missing panel because that had uh, fallen, and um, it needs to be replaced. I'd ask the DMF Definitely. to handle this. You know, for some reason, pre previously the administrator's office was. Handling the elevator, which is should really be a DMF function. I've been trying to transition that in the past year when there's any issue with the, the elevator, and there aren't many, but there is a service contract. Um, this may have gotten lost in the shuffle with the DMF. Um, actually, the secretary was out on vacation, and, and she's been out sick a couple of days. So uh, in any event, Bernadette handled uh, making a request today, my secretary, and um, they just required some further information, and it should be done shortly. Um, also, too, it's not on here, but there was some exterior siding replaced on, the, on this building mm -hmm. on the clock tower. Um, it was done by the same company that did the roofing, which is the company I'm going to ask the DMF to contact about the siding in the firehouse. Makes perfect sense to have Thank them look you. at it. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Okay. And this right here is waiting for a break in the weather because there's going to be a hole on the side, and we're going to have JQ also give us an estimate for the um, the exterior work because we have estimates for the remediation work. But not once the, that work contemplates them taking out a piece of the, some of the um, sheathing and then siding, and that has to be replaced. That isn't part of their estimate. Okay. Uh, firehouse. Retaining wall contract was authorized. Again, I'm going to get a, I'll have somebody get a quote for the siding um, from JQ. I don't know that there's any other issues. The door was fixed mm -hmm. last week. I received the paperwork today. The bill's being processed for payment. Yes. Which is that one? The Bergen door. Oh yeah. Tom said they were birds. That's the that's, that's the, siding the siding issue. The siding problem. What's and the on the side of the, I had I called uh, contractors last year. One or two came out. Maybe one came out, and then we were having trouble getting people to come out to look at it. Um, and then um, in talking to the chief, he said maybe he'd have some luck because he might know some guys in the field. It didn't happen, and you know it's 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 on the list, but it wasn't. You know we were having a hard time getting contractors to look at it. Okay. So now that we have JQ has done a few projects here, assuming they do s complete the roof work satisfactorily, and we're happy with their work, I would continue to use them for projects. Okay, thank yes. you. Uh, committee, any any news on our committee, Madam Mayor? Uh, well, I met with the director the other night, and uh, we just about finalized uh, all the members of the committee. And the next step is I have to talk to the engineer, and then we can get started. So we'll notify. We have about nine or ten. What? So we'll notify. Have they, has anybody been notified? I didn't hear you. What? Has anybody been notified? Uh, that who's Several on the committee? Several people have. Yes. So are we gonna? Are we gonna know? I know you said I was going to. You, you said you were going to be yeah, the representative. Yeah. So else? as soon as I talk to the engineer, um, I have to get a date from him, and then we'll all meet. So we'll know who's on on, on it soon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, we're going to vehicle maintenance, DMF trucks. 
And then we have one truck that's still out of service. Um, and they, they had it in for service at um, Westwood Trucks, I believe it was, um, for initial diagnosis. They were hoping it was going to be something smaller. It's now been diagnosed that it needs a complete new transmission. Um, and when I was waiting for the quote, um, we finally got it this afternoon, and it's quite a large sum, I don't want to say, because we'll get other quotes, and I don't want anyone to have an unfair advantage <laughs> as far as quoting the project, so we have to get uh, another quote on that. Which truck is that, Marianne? Uh, the sanitation truck that was not replaced. Okay. Well, there was actually, there was, or the, we have two that were not new, so it's, I think it's the oldest sanitation right. truck. Fire apparatus, um, yep. there's only, as far as I understand, um, well, the purchase order was issued for the tower ladder repairs. I don't know if that's been completed. Um, I haven't seen paperwork for with a bill, so I'm guessing it hasn't been, but that, that would just be a scheduling issue with the fire department to handle. And the other thing is still that door um, on the truck, which is- on truck 40. Is, mainly cosmetic um but again that's in the chief's hands for you know there's two quotes to him and he was supposed to be comparing apples to apples the val tech we i never heard back from him so 40 and 41 are both waiting on the fire department to schedule the yeah everything everything on our end has been in their okay. hands for a while so thank you you're welcome or are either the d is either the dmf or the fire trucks that have been repaired uh, are any of them going to Paramus or the county? Or are these still going to private vendors? I think um, they, they pick the, uh, some of them do, it depends. The fire truck for the most well, part Well, Tower 41 can't go to Paramus because it needs to be, the That's hydraulics to need to be done That's by a, a special uh, yeah. uh, <coughs> uh, maintenance person, yeah. uh, company, That's, I'm sorry. That's about a suck thing. Yeah. Yeah. When it's general uh, vehicle maintenance, um, the county and Prems can do that. Um, for other vehicles, the again the, um, the the DMF truck only went to this private vendor because Paramus couldn't get to it or wouldn't come up or or something like that. Um, so there's still options. Again, it's like no one's locked in. That's the beauty of having a, agreements. You can you can pick and choose where you go. Understood. I guess. Um it's great that we have them on paper, but if they if they don't mean anything, no, they do mean something. They give the, the DMF. I mean, I'm I'm not going to call for the repair. The DMF uh, people are going to call, or the fire department. Um, we do now have our mechanic is back. He was out for a while. Mm -hmm. He's back, and he can now help facilitate this a little bit better. It may go smoother. Believe me, the uh, staff of the DMF they they're very good. They go out and get quotes and compare, and they. You know, no, I appreciate that, but it, it just sounds to me that we, either Paramus or the county, um, don't appear to be eager or they're not aggressive uh, with their bidding or... No. No, the county hasn't been contacted very often. It was originally Paramus, and they, what they feel like is they, they, won't, they don't want to be... I won't say this for sure, I don't know this for sure, but they're... I've heard through the grapevine that maybe they're a little reticent because they don't feel, want to go through the process and then not get the job type okay. thing. Okay. Which you're going to have with any any private or public. You know, it's a, it's a cost of doing business, whether they want to do it or not. You know, we keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, are, we, are we all set with Ridgewood Maintenance Agreement? I, I wasn't sure why this was put on there. Well, I'm not sure either, but I think last time we were waiting for a signature, or they thought we signed, or they signed. No, you so, authorized it. So with Don, yeah. I take it off? Yeah. All gone. Thank you. Roads, uh, turn signals at Exxon. Uh, Mr. C has asked this, and at the shopping center to be put on, I guess, whether or not these are even valid signs. Well, they're legal signs. So this was a question, Madam Mayor, I think you were going to speak to uh, somebody. I, I have to uh, check on this. I didn't get to it. It's like the fourth time I've asked, like, are these? Well, who put, if the signs are, if the signs are put up, okay, they, sh they should be on the, from the planning board. Yeah. All that traffic stuff is, is planning board information, right? Well, at the Exxon station, the zoning at the Exxon station, they were part of the zoning board because I was part right. of that. And 
um, they were approved. There was a traffic plan, right. and the traffic plan included the curtailment of left-hand turns and you know right-hand turns, depending on what exit you were. So, right. as far as I know, they were approved. They were part of the proposal, and they were memorialized when well, it was approved. I, I believe they still have to go down to the DOT. They still have to get approved by the DOT. Yeah, okay. I mean, we could approve them, but. And who sends that down to planning board? The no, they have to get approval the by the DOT. Yeah. How, does the D how does the DOT get them? That's my question. I think the who question is, the they, are they not being, the enforceability of them, if they're not approved? Oh. Look, if you get a ticket, you know. They or, can, or should they be ticketed if we're noticing that people are making illegal lefts mm -hmm. out of the Exxon? at the okay. coming on to Pascac. They okay. should be going right only. There are signs that say I'll, no left-hand turn. I understand that. Oh, is the issue also one whether you can enforce on a pri private property, or I don't know? Not about that. The sign is a valid sign. You can, yeah. you can do it. But the question is, if it hasn't been totally approved, I'm not sure that it's a valid summons. That's, that's the point that I think is important. So. I, I guess my question is, if it was approved by the, by the, by the planning board, Okay, whose responsibility is to contact DOT to get their yep. approval or denial? That's the planning board's responsibility, the administration's responsibility? Mm -hmm. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think it would be, in, under any stretch, be the administration's responsibility. No. <laughs> so it's the planning board. Or the zoning board, or whoever, whoever did it. Well, I think the zoning board was the one that authorized the signs, if I remember at one of the meetings, I thought. Those signs were authorized by the zoning board, the one you're referring to. And those would be on, and those would be on the planning board. Those would be on the final plans of the facility. We didn't, we didn't do the planning. So is there it, a zoning? It didn't come is, to the planning who, board. Is, who's the president of the zoning board? We, I, I'll email. Let me ask the, the police department to find out. They probably know who to call. Attorney that sends that to can you wouldn't you imagine that part of the conditions of the approval? I would have to mention the applicant yeah. myself. But, yeah. You know, because I generally, generally, good boards don't usually apply for at, for approvals and stuff like that. Usually, conditions are at the applicant usually has to do all the conditions. The attorney and usually that's a requirement for them to do. Stephen, they haven't done it. They can they can be they can be summoned for for not doing what they're supposed to or or other action be taken uh, in terms of uh, you know. Because when, when approval is given, there's certain conditions. Yes. And it's generally the applicant that has to make the um, the effort to get the uh, the condition satisfied. Otherwise, they're in violation. Boards don't generally make applications. Administrators are not involved at all. Thank you. Fine. So, so I'm not involved. So if the applicant <laughs> is required to submit the paperwork to the DOT to get it approved, I, I think that's what you're saying in a nutshell. Then wouldn't that come back to somebody? Well, I would think that the uh, our compliance officer could go out there and ask for the uh, the the, uh, the approval if it hasn't been filed with the, uh, the administrator. Oh, so <laughs> I, I know I get it back there. Okay. There you go. I'm working. Like I'm working way back. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. You're wrong. So could you also please check the shopping center while you're out? <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Well, 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 can we, can we, we just say no extra pay for compliance yeah. officer? The compliance officer needs to check. And you'll get your budget a day later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> should have had a no, no, no. There's Wait, Gary Mazanak. I'm joking <clears throat> that I'm the one who's going to have to ask him to do this. Okay. I could <laughs> ask him if you'd like. No, that's okay. Bernadette okay. will help me. She's great with that. Okay. Uh, I have the 1415 road defects. I'm not sure whether we've covered this or not. I just put it on. Are we okay? Are we moving ahead? There's no change. I mean, in this weather, you wouldn't be doing it. So. Okay. So should I leave it on? We do so have we... new potholes coming up, though. I know. There's some on Eastview, actually. Someone sent me uh, some pictures on Eastview. And, and yeah, we took care of the one on Eastview. Yeah, but I think you took care. I think they took care of a few, but not all of them. It's, it was. They did a, a few because they know they're going to come right out because of the uh, weather. Okay. But um, did they go back? They, they did it anyway. Okay. Uh, One second, Mr. Bruno. Yes. Um, just a qu just a question to Marianne. If you see a major a major defect in the county road, uh, does the resident report that to you when you call the county, or they call the county? <clears throat> the police department calls the county. They call the DMF is who they're supposed to call. 
Okay. When there's a road issue, because they're the road department. Okay. Even though it's a county road. Yes. Okay. But yes. it's a county I'll road. Them, I'll tell the resident. The police department keeps a list of it, and they forward it on to the county. Yeah, between. They did some work on Van Emberg uh, recently. Yeah. Calvin. Calvin, and I guess that's Walnut. Well, it's huge. Big it's it's, it's got to yeah. be. It's got to be that deep. Yeah. They did because that there was an accident there. Probably hit the pothole. So, is there something that we also can put a list of? So, in, in this, for instance, we said, uh, who do we contact? And I think it was the police, and then it was DMF, correct? So, it's DMF. And then earlier, we had a discussion about recycling and who do we contact? And I guess they go to Marianne first, and she said that, that was Bernadette who handles recycling. So I think there are, there are resident questions that it would be nice to have a list, you know, that, you know. It's in the calendar. It is on the calendar? It's in the calendar by topic. And in fact, I asked her to put recycling. Recycling technically should be through the DMF. We get all the calls. Anytime there there's any problem, we get the calls. And Bernadette handles it. Usually on a Friday, she gets a call from a resident. They picked up my paper. They didn't pick up my commingled. It's a separate truck, so sometimes they're later. And usually that's the only issue. In this instance, I guess Van Amberg, um, it was missed for whatever reason. Um, but um, it is supposed to be the DMF. The problem with recycling is there's no one in the office on Fridays at the DMF. So that's why Bernadette gets them. So then I guess, I guess the, unfortunately you opened up the question as to wh where's the calendar then? I'm sorry. It's at the printer, literally. Okay. okay. So that'll have, that'll have, you know, who to call and who to contact so that every, the residents at least will have one phone call versus several, hopefully? Yes. Okay. Uh, e, communication with residents. Oh, one, sorry. One question yes. for the administrator. What days um, is the recycling coordinator in her or his office? Well, the recycling coordinator, there isn't one right now. It was Elaine, and we're evaluating who should be that person. Okay. Um, it makes more sense of, you know, there's some people that already do some functions that are related to recycling. Okay. The recycling coordinator is, the terminology really refers to the person who does the tonnage grant. Right, right, right. I, I, and not so much the, the, the building. Day -day. But it wouldn't be bad to have that person be the one yeah. who. Well, it, I'm, I'm just saying, if the if that person isn't there on Friday and everyone's recycling is getting picked up on Friday, I think that's when that person that handles those questions should be in. Right. As opposed to Tuesday when the recycling. Right. Well, well it, it, it's funny you say that. The, typically, the recycling coordinator has not been the person to have to field those complaints, Correct. but I think that's a great yeah. suggestion. Whoever's fielding the complaint should be on the day people pick up the recyclables. That's it. Well, no, what I'm saying is the person doing the complaints was not always the coordinator, and the coordinator right. is getting paid. The other person's not getting paid to deal with it, so Correct. it should be the same person mm -hmm. whose the calls are directed to. Sure. Um, okay, very good. It was never anybody in the DMF that was a recycling coordinator, so it. Right. We'll, we'll have to figure that one out All right, before thank the you. calendar goes out. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go on to E, communication with residents, resident feedback website. Uh, the good news is uh, Tom Sears sent in a question. Did you get an answer? Yes, I did. Okay, check that one off. Uh, the next one, F, COA, status of contract with Habitat for Humanity for v, VFW. Yeah, I, I'm working on that. Uh, basically, uh, I've, I've called, reached out to the attorney for Habitat on two occasions now uh, to move this along to schedule a closing and also find out what their schedule is in terms of you know, proceeding with the project. Now, the problem, as I gather, when I called him and said, you know, let's, let's get moving with a uh, with the closing date, He's all, excuse me, I'm the uh, land use attorney, I'm not the other, I'm not the other attorney they have. Like, okay, so give me that attorney. He said, well, I'll call the director and I'll have him call you, and that was fine. So that was two weeks ago, and then I called last week again, and, uh, you know, this is a lot different than dealing with J.C. Raimondo, who you, well, I used, used to talk to pretty much like several times a week. <laughs> so this is the last week I'm, I'm working on, again, getting that contact uh, and, and trying to schedule something and then have a report about you know where the the time frame is going to be but the next step for me is to schedule the closing and and you know get the property transferred out um to them okay tom you had asked for this any other questions uh 
Would it be advised that the council president also calls on behalf council of the president council? Not, I don't know that yeah. he has any uh, yeah. to I mean, help me at all. It's yeah. been dragging on for three years, and well, the whole project, not yeah, just, well, yeah, not well, just well, your yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that, you know, you, you got to remember. I mean, you know, with all due respect about dragging on and people want things done, Co is dragging on also. But this is unfortunately, you know, this is the nature of this this thing. Uh, it was really unfortunate. That J.C. Ramundo, you know, is not right, there, right? Because, because she they was, was great. They, they were so hot about she, us right. moving, wasn't it? I mean, and she, now all exactly, of a sudden, exactly, exactly, exactly. They're, they're dead. Yeah. Let, let the, me interject yeah. because I don't know that you're aware, Ken. Okay. We have had repeated contacts from her successor. Oh. He has been, in fact, that's what prompted me to ask you: Can we get this closed? Because he's been asking for all the services to be disconnected. And, and not only like uh, terminated, but disconnected from the building, which is a lot of work for Bernadette. She's doing it with all the different utilities, some of which have never been on it. Like disconnect the phone. We don't have they do it by the phone number. There's no phone number for the place. So, so that's one of the things is they're foisting all that responsibility okay, but on let us. Then, then, then let me Wait. bring this back to Mike's yes, question. So yes, yes, yeah. I'll yeah. directly. That Why aren't we communicating? Turn. No, we all communicate. I can't. I mean, if you I, didn't I, know I, that I, this was going on. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I'm not allowed to communicate with a, with a client who's represented by a lawyer. I have to deal through a lawyer. Okay, it's unethical for me to do it otherwise. Mm. So what I'm going to have to do is no, is, no. But yeah, sh should yeah. have been able to give you that information. Yeah. So well, that information is is not about doing a closing. Closing is usually with the with the lawyer. Okay, and. If this is not the lawyer who I was dealing with, and I was dealing with them, then and they're represented by another lawyer, that's the party who I have to get in touch with. And so yeah, you can understand if the lawyer says I'll I'll have him contact you, you know. And frankly, Tom, I didn't know that Ken was waiting on any of this information. This is just right. normal yeah. uh, requests I'm getting and Bernadette's handling. Um, you know, when it started to be a little bit of a burden, I'm like, enough is enough. I also knew they were doing some so, other um, phase, two. So, phase two testing, so yeah. I didn't think the closing so, was being held have up. Have your test. lawyer call our lawyer so but, we can get But this again, this done. sort of leads me to a little confusion because this has been on the agenda several times, and mm -hmm. you had information, and now Ken didn't know you had information. So again, I, it goes to. Well, no, here's the thing, this, Tom. This hasn't look, been don't, on don't, the agenda. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm you know not what? saying you're doing anything wrong. No, no. I'm just I, I, you know, I, I want. We to, had information. I just want to say, well, hey, look, her information is irrelevant to my information. Okay, my information is, is has to do with the closing. So, let, let me just take care of it in, in, through the no, lawyers. No, no, no. We're not schedule. saying you're yeah. not taking yeah. care of it. I'm just saying, like, we're asking every week for information, and then we're and then we're hearing from you. You're working through an attorney to get this process, and then Marianne has. Uh, different information that maybe the council would like to know the status of where we are with these things. That's all. But, all right. the type of thing but I will say this is the first time it's been on, on the agenda in quite some time. It so. hasn't been, yeah. Mm. I agree. So I'll leave it on until we please yeah. have to it's take it off. Yeah. You may do so, of course. Okay. Bob, I'd just like to ask one yes. question. Go ahead. Uh, Marianne, uh, not that you have to make a special call, but next time you're talking with this person, I've just kind of lost track. Once they s get the, the closing done, what's their time frame like? Is the funding in place? I'd like to know if they have a time frame from closing to either groundbreaking or a completion date if they can give us any idea yeah, on that. I'd probably be in better position than yes. Mary. Uh, okay, that's sorry. I, I judged wrong. That's a different back piece of information now. <laughs> okay. so I gave her back something. I'll take, I'll take <laughs> okay. something away. Thank okay. you. So. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Anybody else on uh, that subject? So I guess my only question is once it is done and approved and everybody has all the paperwork, then what are we talking about? Erecting the building and, and then advertising, or what, what's the final steps? Why don't you wait till I find out what their timing is, and then we'll give you a report. But the, the long and the short of it is, you don't do the advertising; they they take care of it. That's the point of them, them taking over the property and being the agency which uh, handles the uh, the uh, advertising, the sale, okay. the marketing, the uh, qualification of the buyers, and the closing, whatever they do. So okay, it's not right. us. Okay. One, one more question. Yep. Um, Madam Mayor, do we take care of that window yet in that facility? I didn't hear you off. The, the window? 
the stuff in the, the stuff in the DM of it that we wanted the stained uh, glass have, window the stained glass window and all the other stuff that we wanted to get out of there oh no it's good that you reminded me well yeah. I did I did check with the BFW and they want nothing in the building they want nothing no, no but I I would like to have okay yeah. right. thank you I'll make a star by that okay okay we're moving on to G budget 2017 budget Are we still on track for next week I assume I believe so is that what was it the 15th or the 17th 15th? Mary Ann? 15th? What? The 17th? The 15th? I don't remember what the mayor said. The 17th? Well, it's, it's, the, it's that state law letter that we get. That Tech, I think it's technically the meeting after that date. So No, but we're, we're due to get it on next week, right? Per that I don't letter. remember what the mayor told you. No, it's not, it's not the mayor. It's, it is, we though. Was, it comes from the mayor. No, but we were supposed to get it January 15th, and then you sent me a letter from somebody the state that said we had an extension till February 15th, I thought. No, it's, it's actually, there's a date and it's the meeting after that date. I'll, I'm gonna check while we're and on it's it. the 17th. So will we get the budget next week? I guess the shortcut, the question? Hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully, as in it's not done yet, or we're close to it, or we're still waiting, or we're just going to hold on to it until the last day. What does that mean, hopefully? It's not being held on to. I know, but shouldn't we know where the budget is? I mean, this has been a we're, question I've been no. asking, and we keep saying you're so busy, we got a lot of work to do. The priority in this town right now for the council is to get a budget together so we could approve it. We have discussions. We have people that aren't being paid. We don't know, you know, repairs. We need to get the budget set so we can approve it. And we have to sit for hours like we did last year. So I don't understand why we don't know where the budget's at. It's just unconscionable we how you can sit there and say, we're operating I'm not asking for a temporary budget. So you keep saying things that just aren't accurate. I'm asking when will we get the budget? It's unconscionable. I don't know the exact time and date. We're working on it. Well, why not? When we get it I'm done, sorry, get I'm it. sorry to be so well, abrasive, but, but why don't we know when we have the budget? Because well, we're working on it. Okay? That's not my question. I want to know why don't we know when we will get, when will we get the budget? The budget's due. We should have a budget. It's, 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 a, it's embarrassing it's, to sit here. You know, thank God there's only three residents, but I don't know who's watching, but it, it comes to a point where we hear the same thing. We're busy, we're busy, we're busy. Everybody wants to get paid. You know, okay. They're getting paid. Yeah. You so where's that, the budget? Mean, is my question. Bob, just, just I want to just a question. I just you can make comment that people aren't getting paid. That's not true. We but just we just said people were getting paid late. They weren't getting paid on time. We had no, a discussion. No, 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 no. That is not. That no. Was vendors, vendors. Vendors. Yeah, That's what I meant. Those vendors. Are Sorry, from vendors. Last year. People okay. to me is vendors. So when will we have the budget? A date, please, Madam Mayor. I don't have the exact time and date for you. When we get it done, we'll be glad to give it to you. We're working on it. We, we're working on it. You have a temporary budget. The town is operating fine. That's fine. As soon as you get the budget, you'll get it. I, I can't give you, I'm not going to say this day or this day or this time, because if it's not here, then you'll be uh, doing the same thing. So how much of the budget is left to be done, I guess, is the question. Quite a bit. So, so, so we're already well into the season, and quite of the budget has to be done. We rolled over everything. You've analyzed what we spent for last year, I assume. Yeah, well, that's a, that's another whole part of it. We have to no, I know that's a big part of it, we have to but that's all done. The I mean, it's a lot of work. The question should be what we didn't spend. But you know, you just have to wait until it's ready. I don't yeah, I know that's the sad part. We do have to wait until it's ready. That's but it. it's it's wait. it's actually. And I'll say it, it's, it's embarrassing. And it's really, it's your fiduciary responsibility as the mayor of this town to have a budget prepared when it's due so the council It'll, can be reviewing it. You'll have it, it when it's due. It's Thank not you. Due so yet. we'll go on to open litigation and open engineering issues. So, uh, so open, yes. The library HVAC system is under the budget, and that's a time frame that, you know, I know the engineer went down there to look at it. And I believe our grant depends on if we're going to increase that Correct. money. I agree. 
Yeah. But we don't have a budget because they're working on it. They've been but Tom, that, that goes in the capital budget. And I already talked to her. We have to add an additional 5000 for the extras. That's already, you know, something that's in the capital budget. How do we know that? We don't. Good capital point. budget's How done? Do we know that? So you did the capital budget. That part is done? Not totally. Okay. I mean, I, I'm asking questions, and I'm you make you make you faces you, like like these aren't legitimate you're just questions. Jumping at me to I'm not jumping me, at okay? you to attack you. I'm asking no, you where the, the budget is. It's very simple. Okay, we'll move on to open litigation. Thank you, uh, Ken. You sent the, the letters. Anybody have any questions? I'm sure everybody has seen. Uh, I think Sue put it in the package. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, again, we did ask for open engineering issues. We didn't receive anything from Mr. Satil, but yet we received three resolutions. So I would like if there could be some contact with him if there's some things we need to know about for engineering. Would that be you, Marion, or should I reach out to him? That's relevant to the budget discussion, so that's when it was intended to be done. Sorry? We, we were in, intending to have his input involved <clears throat> in the capital budget. Have you met with him already? For that portion of the budget? Yes, we did. Okay. But we don't have the numbers yet. We talked about what needs to be in it. I, I understand you don't have the numbers, but are there any major uh, engineering feats? Well, <laughs> I have to. Is that a word that we, well, that we gotta for, look forward to? I don't think anything that's not had not on the horizon, other than what happened today with the residents, that okay. would certainly be added. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, on the council section, we'll move to appointments. We have zoning board members. Uh, I don't know if we'd like to appoint the members this evening. Uh, you folks can tell me. Right now, we have Mr. Getz, we have Ms. Grimaldi. Uh, I received another email from a Rich Sontag, and I believe there was another gentleman, Michael, but I don't have his correspondence with me. Uh, we have four names. Uh, I did speak with Steve Black, who said, if he needed to jump on, he would, but he doesn't necessarily have to jump on if there are other members willing to go forward. So, well, Bob, don't we also have the existing members who indicated they would like to be considered yeah. also? I don't know, have they? I, I, Peter Burke and... I, uh, right, uh, Sue, you reached out to them at some point, up, right? I, I have yeah. nothing else. I have nothing in print from them at, at what, this point. Did we ask them for anything, or did we just ask if they were interested? I when I spoke to Mike, did not ask for that because mm -hmm. that was going back mm -hmm. yeah, right. to mm -hmm. December. Okay, so shall we ask and wrap this up next meeting then? Hopefully, yes. Okay, that, be great. done with it because well, we got to wrap it up you, quickly. You, we got you need to make a out. decision on these people if we're going to. We're going to hear that. We have to hear that application. What application? Well, that's the application due for the next uh, for this month. Well. It, you know, you're talking about, the orchard. You're talking about the orchard, right? You're talking about the orchard, right? Complete or incomplete. Talking about what? The, 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 the L Road. Oh. The border. Golden yeah. Orchards, L Road. I think you have until next, uh, uh, you can do it the next meeting, but I spoke to Mr. Azalino on the application. He's we, gonna, yeah, we could he's probably. Gonna, he's going to determine that it's not complete. It's so, not, it's not, not complete okay. this time. So, so okay. no, let's, let's get their written request to be on the board. And then we can have all the. Um, okay, so we'll wrap it up next meeting. Uh, and is that stuff we'll be free to talk about in a public meeting about these people's qualifications? And I just want to make sure we're not airing things we shouldn't be airing in no, public. No, they're not, they're not employees. They're, uh, okay. they're people that you can talk about. Okay, thank and, you. And just to, so I understand who's doing this, I'm assuming Sue's, Susan would be handling the follow up with the people that were originally contacted by her about yes. the yes. 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 Okay. yes. yes. <clears throat> Codification project? Uh, I'm working on that. I thought I would have it in, done in the month of February. It's probably going to take till March to do it. So just for my own edification, Ken, what exactly? I know I keep I have it on the list, and I ask, so what exactly are, are we are we going to get when you're done? Well, in a nutshell, you know, okay, we, we've covered the nutshell before, but I'll cover it again. <laughs> basically, I love it's a, okay. Well, I do too. Um, basically, we got a entire printout manuscript from the General Code of all our ordinances, which are fairly extensive. So then they go through it and they've made some recommendations. I'm going through their recommendations, but also looking at the ordinances to see, you know, 
if I think that something else should be recommended in terms of changes and if there are updates. We've had some, uh, you know, mm -hmm. things happen. Now, I'm not going to be go coming back and saying change every single ordinance because that's not the function of codification. Codification is putting it into organization and, and, and take the more obvious um, uh, uh, things to, to try to make it up to date, basically. Uh, and then there are recommendations of whether you want to do something or not. So it's you'll get something that's going to be an outline of, of ordinances that are recommended to be looked at, um, not necessarily drafts of, of ordinances, uh, because, you, you know, when you want to change an ordinance, you know, this you see, I don't think anything on this council is easy. It's, you know, it's, it, there's a lot to it. Uh, so you'll discuss if you want to change a particular ordinance or not, and this does not block that or sh slow it down. If you want to do something now about a particular ordinance, you can, but that's, this is just to update the ordinances because, for example, uh, you know, like the insurance committee, I know people have cited that in the past, it's in the, it's in the code, how come, you know, what's happening, so, you know, one of the recommendations is going to be to eliminate that, um, and, uh, you know, that's what the codification is. Ultimately, you'll get a look at it, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a process, it's not, it's not one of these things you do in, uh, you know, lickety split, and then mm -hmm. ultimately you'll give this back to general code. They'll go over it again, and then they'll finalize it for a publication for adoption of the entire code, and then you'll have a new code. You know, that's fairly updated, subject to whatever changes you want to make. <laughs> okay, so you think next week? Um, no, next uh, meeting? Not, not next week. In March? <laughs> a month. <laughs> Good try, Bob. Just, Good oh. try. <laughs> I was going to ask about the budget next, but I'll leave that alone. All right, March. Okay. Uh, anti nepotism ordinance, Mr. Cassio, Dr. Cassio. Yeah, I, I asked that to be put on. Um, it's uh, just a boilerplate uh, ordinance uh, regarding uh, hiring of uh, family members in the township. A lot of municipalities have it. Uh, it will only help us in the future, so there's no uh, oh, future uh, future misrepresentations or lawsuits or slights anywhere. Uh, just take a look at it over over a, a week or two and come back and we'll talk about it a little bit. This is not only hiring, but it says promotions. Um, yep. All employment type stuff. Yeah. All, all employment issues, a host of them. Steve, do you have a cop, a list of, uh, of municipalities that you said there's a lot of municipalities? Can I can get you a few, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just so because I can look them up and take a look. Yep. Yeah, and no can I, I took a look at this since, you know, the administration's um, involved in hiring. I was just, there's some inconsistencies between the sections. Is this one that's in effect? Who drafted this? I'm trying to figure yeah, it's out. Yeah, it's in effect. Okay. Where? What town? What town is that? Fairwood. In Fairwood? Okay. Yeah, my, my uh, gut reaction was, Ken, for you to actually, I, I tried to read this and I think it was more your area than my area, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I just. Yeah, sure Ken can break it down. Yeah, I, I wasn't so, so quite sure after is, a while. Is this something we're looking to adopt and put in our, our uh, procedures? It's, it's an ordinance. It's, it's an ordinance. Oh, okay. Just like I yeah. have to look at the uh, other ordinance. Right. Okay. Now, same I don't thing think it's that. a bad thing, but I, I think it needs some work. Um, uh, yeah, because I'm just even trying to see how it's implicated. It seems like it's implicated, I guess, for the administrator. I guess I can't hire my son. No, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no you can that. hire Rick. It spells it out right there. <laughs> I know. You've got you your own personal line right there. Maybe as a season. I don't think he will want to work for me anyway. Um, Ken, I'm want just. To work for me. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Ken, yeah. I have a question. Is this something like this? If if the codification co uh, company thought this was something to worthwhile, would they have suggested this in the codification? Yeah, they, they would have. Uh, well, I'll, I'll take a look and see if they did. Okay. Um, but. Um, but does the codification go to that extent, like to suggest things that are missing from ours or the, not? The, yeah, they, they do make, rec they do, it's not so much they recommend it, they'll just say we've seen this in other towns, you might want to consider it. Not, okay. not, not whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, but they do, you know, they'll, they'll throw something out. I didn't really take a look because I didn't even know this was on actually, but because I didn't see that uh, ordinance. But, okay, uh, but if... But I could, I could take a look and see if they had something on it. Uh, but. 
you know, if you give me the list of the other municipalities, that'll give me, uh, I can go to ECODE and, and see what we have also. You know, the, sure, uh, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the garbage bag communication plan, uh, I know Madam Mayor, you mentioned tonight uh, for people to, to call up uh, the waste management or bulldog or whomever. Do we need to do any other form of communication or just basically let people know, you know, if they want to continue with bags, it's not a requirement anymore? I mean, anymore? even if you go to Food Town, they have a section, bulldog, and then they have a section with a <coughs> sign for waste management that you can call and use any kind of bag, you know, so they even put some information out. But basically, I think that anybody who wants to stay with the assigned bag, you know, that you purchase, um, would have to probably go with the one vendor. The other vendor would be more for the people who want to take the quarterly fee and not buy their bags. So it's and up to the resident, really. And on a related note, the website has been modified. Um, the mm -hmm. purple and blue bag picture has been removed. Okay. Um, there's, it's been reworded. <laughs> what are your options? You go to the page. It talks about um, the two companies. It took the pricing information is off, um, and it does say that you have any questions or call. These are two of the vendors you can use, and it references the fact that we're now using a sealed bag versus a per bag system. I, I do think there's some confusion um, that. People feel we've done away with the bags or colored bags, um, and we had as, as a town we had that as a requirement, uh, and that's been that way for quite some time. We've removed that restriction, but it's still an option. And I know we are telling people to call Boulder or Waste Management. Um, if they want but, to change them, but yeah. I mean, shouldn't, uh, I guess don't we have an obligation uh, to, change, to change the ordinance? We've done it, but is there some additional communication, formal communication that needs to be done? Well, it's, it's going to be in the calendar. There'll be a write-up on it okay. explaining it. Um, at least it'll be there. They can look at it, keep it on their calendar. Um, we're trying to do that also for the debris. We're trying to kind of separate and make it a little more... Okay. You know, dedicated. Because I, I think, you know, and if people are listening, the one thing is if you are satisfied with your provider and you want to continue to buy bags, you certainly can. Right. That, that is an option. Okay. Not a requirement. But not a requirement. Right. Okay. Unless your, your vendor hauler requires it. Yeah. Yes. Well, they, they, they have the option of going with the they, one who does or the one who doesn't. Yes, mm -hmm. and a vendor may offer, has the option to offer a requirement of a colored bag, which includes their tipping fees, or not or, using it. Or the other quarterly fee. Okay. Okay, Ken, number four, form of government. Yeah. Are we also, anywhere? Well, yeah, also next month, uh, there's we're trying to put together something that's in understandable form, you know, in a nutshell, okay. rather than give you, like, 52 statutes and have you read them. Yeah, I, I guess also, besides the options, uh, if we are to move forward on a change, you know, I'm more concerned about what needs to be done and when, because this is, I know you mentioned briefly that it, it you know, you weren't 100 percent, but there's the petitions and there's has to go in the general election, or, which is coming up. So I'm, I'm just trying to see if, if we're going to move forward that. We have something, and I don't know what deadlines are. I don't know when we have to file with anybody. So that's all I'm interested in. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're at the salt storage uh, bid, and also, Madam Mayor, uh, there was some correspondence from some residents regarding not being contacted or, or what's the story or... So I'm not really sure where we are with this, whether you've reached out to people. Well, I did speak... Well, I did... You know, have my conversations with Lord County Bank a uh, while back, trying to avoid putting the salt shed out on our parking lot. Um, but I did speak to a, a resident who was initially the one who called Saturday, actually, uh, or Sunday, no, Sunday. And uh, they will be coming in next week. 
Um, he had been away the week before <coughs> at his uh, other office in San Francisco, and so they'll be contacted for next Monday probably. And there was a, a, a young lady, M Mrs. McCarter, I think. I don't know if you're contacting her, but she sent an email also. Well, no, I, I contacted Mr. Metasker. Okay, and there's Mr. He's the, in, uh, the one um, who was uh, kind of spearheading. Okay, so will he reach out to the neighbors because he, Mrs. Yeah. McCarter well, he, did he send he an email? He does reach out to okay. the neighbors. Yeah. So, so you'll we'll wait for your response. Yeah, Mr. McCarter was here earlier. Okay. Okay, so we'll put that on the list again. On a, on a related note, um, I mentioned in the past that there was some time sensitivity to the award of the bid. Um, I reached out to the uh, low bidder and he said he would be willing to consent to extend the time for awarding the bid. Great, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Um, we also have a property tax interest relief. Bob, oh, just sorry. one other comment on the salt. Yes. Um, with what Mrs. Murphy said before about using the swim club, um, I'm open to anything that makes sense, but one thing she said that would have to be off the table, and that would be, uh, she said, yeah. using the parking lot and then parking cars on the Hold street on, during the season. Hold on, folks, sorry. No. Marianne? Sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, yeah, and she mentioned, you know, they would put cars, park cars out on the street. Uh, you know, that can't happen. We're not doing that to the residents yeah, in I that agree. area to, uh, you know, so that, I'm not saying the option can't happen, but certainly that part of it can't. What was the part of it? And just back to the notification. So um, I, I understand that Mr. Tasker is, uh, you know, a primary contact. But, I mean, shouldn't, if we're going to have... They'll all get a letter. The, they're all going to get a letter. Uh, everyone's going to get a letter? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just working out with him the okay. time. Okay. He suggested what time of day and all, all that kind of okay. stuff. Okay. Uh, okay. We're at the property tax interest relief request. Uh, there was a uh, an email from Ms. Lipnick regarding some I guess some, I guess she paid taxes and it was a check that came back and we're not sure if it was bounced or a routing number, an ABA number, et cetera. So she had asked relief on the interest. I'm not sure where we are with that or, or what, what we need to do to respond to uh, Ms. Lipnick. Is this, is this something from the administration or, or how is this handled? Marianne, Madam Mayor. It's a tax collector issue. It's not administration, as far uh, as I, I know. I'm asking him, but no one. No, I, I mean, I'm. I was initially asked to kind of um, run interference and gather the facts, and I gathered the facts. I spoke to Mrs. Slipnick, and then I think believe she wrote a letter to the tax collector, and from there, um, I'm not aware. I, I don't know who told you or I, someone became came the is of the opinion that it's up to the council to give relief if there is any i believe that is true i, I think that probably you have to pass a resolution to waive tax to waive the interest otherwise the tax collector has to collect it so i think uh, do they have to send it to the state i, um, I don't know i have to I have to check that and so i think that but i think i think that does have i think to be you should check on it sure. it does have to be an uh, action by the council so can will you check please yes and I'll give it to you in a nutshell. Thank you. I love <laughs> nutshells. Uh, Bob, I didn't know we'd be putting it off. Um, I jotted down just a couple of questions that I'd like to bring up now, because then if it needs Ken to research or anything, he can do it at the same time. Go ahead. Um, and Mrs. Lipnick's in the audience. I want her to know none of these questions are personal. I would be asking no matter who put it on here. Um, has the int do we know if the interest has been paid so far? Because isn't usually interest paid and then we would authorize a refund uh, as opposed to waiving a charge of it? Be because are you not, I'll say, guilty until yeah. you're presumed innocent in this area um, if, if it wasn't paid? Well, I, I, don't I, 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 I don't think, think so. I think, I think it's not like the tax appeal where you have to pay your taxes in order to pursue the, the appeal. I think probably not. I mean, I can... I don't think it's a, really a problem uh, because if the interest isn't paid, it's a, it becomes delinquent, and the relief for that is to have a tax sale, 
which doesn't take place until months afterwards. So I don't really think that that's, uh, you know, uh, I don't think it's a prerequisite to, for the request. Okay. I don't think. Okay. Top my head. okay. And uh, my other thing is, again, nothing personal. Um, I, I would recommend that we don't do this because I think it will establish a pattern where if people want more time to pay taxes, they will purposely put in misinformation and get extensions and not expect interest to be charged. So I see it as setting up a bad precedent that if we do it for one, we have to do it for everyone who may do it on purpose to get a few extra days. Um, so you know, I don't like setting precedents like this, just my opinion right now. Okay. Ken, you're going to check anyway, some information yeah. first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next one is D. I had the, the, the audit status, LOSAP. So the first of all is the audit status. Are, is, I, I had, did not speak to uh, Mr. May. Are they finalizing or finalized or done with the audit? Done. Or close they, to it? They don't even start until the financial statements just are filed with the state as of February 10th. They okay. can't do anything until those are done. <clears throat> okay. I know he was in doing work, though, I assume, right? No, he did pre-audit work, oh, pre but he hasn't work. been in, they haven't been in since December, and his colleague is having a baby any okay. day, so I don't know what their timing is like. I'll give him a call, then. Uh, the low I think, no, and just so you, in fairness to him, he called to find <clears throat> out when the financial statements would, would be available, and I believe they're being filed through um, Susan. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the CFO signature. I thought I would have gotten it today in the yeah. mail. I but, mailed to the pages. So but that's okay. It's not important. unusual to submit it before the on or before the 10th. Did you get her in? No. She's not coming in to sign? Not the CFO. We mailed it down. And she's, I scanned it down. She's going to mail it back. Okay. I will follow up tomorrow with her, though. <coughs> okay. I put low sap here. I know I, I have. We just back up. You may, can I just ask, you mailed it down? To the pages that the CFO needed to sign, that's four pages, or, or one page with four copies, or four pages, I should say. She needs four copies of each. But so, so, and perhaps I misunderstood. This is how it was done last year. No, okay. the role of the individual that was recently. She's not a C she can't sign as the CFO. The CFO, the CFO has to be the designated person who's on file, and we have a, a CFO. Yes is Denise Marabello, who signed last year. So okay. We have to be consistent with those titles. But no, besides that, I mean, she's, she's who's signing. Yeah. She's the CFO. She's okay. still engaged as the CFO. But wouldn't we just tell Denise that when she comes one day, come in and sign? Or, I mean, instead of... Denise doesn't come in. I thought she comes in a little bit. No? Not at all? No, she hasn't in a while. Oh, I thought she did come in. She used, to come in. she used to come in. She used to come in. I thought Denise. She, no, Denise is the one who came in, and then when um, there was a falling out, she had resigned, and then she agreed to stay on until we found a successor. Uh, I believe she may have been in once, maybe twice after that, but she's been doing it through um, emails and phone calls. And we have the new person who's coming in, and she's been in every week for three hours at least more sometimes <coughs> since she started. That's the tax collector who is also getting to learn everything else as well and get familiar with our systems, but she's not our signatory. She does not being paid for that responsibility. <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I have a question also on the audit status. Um, Mary, you bring up that his associate is due to have a baby any moment, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, have we gotten any assurances from him that with that person being out, it will not affect our workload going forward? I don't think it should because the state law is that you have to have your audit done by June 30th, and I don't think that there's going to be any problem with it. Usually the right. auditors are here for a couple weeks, if that. So right. I, I, don't think, I, I don't think that was going to impact him other than maybe – timing a little bit but no I think she's going to be back soon and, and I, I don't think that's going to be an issue with, with all due respect would you mind asking him that way when it doesn't happen I don't have to say well Marianne guessed that it would not be a problem well actually on this note Ken I mean the I'll, audits, I'll have a conversation with him and I'll report yeah I was going to say we're Susan since it's a yeah, council no function I didn't know, you know I'll call him and make sure everything's okay and I'll send you an email to, uh, Peter thank no you. problem thank you okay uh, okay, 
So the LOSAP, uh, I, th I know there were some emails back and forth. The only intention there was to, to just, again, make sure that we're in compliance. I did, you, Marianne, you and I spoke about this, and it is the Lincoln Financial who is the administrator. Mm, okay. Uh, but yeah. I think, uh, you know, I don't know, my opinion is it's, it's a retirement fund, and retirement funds generally are audited. And I'm only doing it to make sure we're not overfunded or underfunded and that we're in compliance of whatever the, the rules and regulations are on LOSAP. So if I'll have a conversation with uh, Mr. May also because, you know, there's, there's a lot of people involved in this. And the one thing you don't want is, is for people to come out of the plan and then that be funded properly for the remaining people. So I'll have a conversation with that. Uh, Regarding next section, personnel, there's just two issues. One, uh, Peter asked me to update regarding the chief of police. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm just trying to move through it. Um, I spoke to Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, chief uh, Hooper on Thursday and told him that we did have his contract and we are reviewing it. We're well aware of the deadlines, uh, but you know we had a lot on the plate and I just felt at this point I'd like to get some of the stuff off our plate. And he was fine, you know, his comment, I don't know how much I can and cannot say, but he was okay with it, so I'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, the other issue is uh, Mike brought up, uh, wanted me to put out, I didn't put a name, but there's, there's an open voucher for an employee, and we're trying to find the status of it. That's the one I haven't signed, um, yes. because Going back to the hiring process, it was um, it was decided to take a voting holiday, and rather than the election pay, and now it's both. So I do have a problem with that because that's what was negotiated. I will sign it because I know the council wants it that way. But I do have a problem with it because it was decided you can't have both, the pay or the floating holiday. And, but that's what the council put in. I will sign it, although I have to say I don't agree with it. <clears throat> that's it. Okay. Thank you. There's one or the other, not both. Okay, moving on to F. Uh, so there was a, a teen center complaint I guess regarding a $10 fee, uh, I'm not I'm not quite sure uh, The, the $10 fee the is program. in the ordinance that was passed a couple years ago, uh -huh. and it is a program that children here belong to. And we, in 2015, I believe it was, we did get a lot of complaints about things going on there, and we had no idea, you know, who of our children were in it, um, and we do pay the salary of the person who works on Friday nights. We, we contribute half to every special function, and they, they have quite a few. And you know we, we do expend town funds, and it was suggested that by a council person that we should, each person from here, children from here, should have a card saying that they belong to this uh, place and they have to pay a fee since the, count, the town does uh, support the program. Any program that is under is that the town has, people pay a fee to join it. And this is a nominal $10 fee. They could go every Friday night if they want to go um, all year long. And that was put in place at the time by the council. And that's how it is. It's similar to the fee for seniors, correct? There's a fee for seniors. Yeah. There's, There's a fee, a fee for, for seniors too, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so Oh, I mean, if there's an ordinance, there's an ordinance. Uh, have we communicated this back to Mrs. Getz? I don't know. I didn't. She sent you the email. I, somebody did, I think, but it wasn't me. Laura Getz sent you the email. No, I know she sent. So, will you respond to her and tell her there's an ordinance? This is what this is. Uh, this is what I talked about, I guess, last week about well, last week, last meeting when no, I was fine. about communication, letting people, residents huh? know. What I'll time? respond. Okay. Which second? I was just curious if the complaint was for the ten dollars. I think it was the ten dollars. There was an email. It's ten dollars. Huh? The ten dollars. Ten dollars. It's in here in the packet. Yeah, the correspondence in there. 
<clears throat> okay, council duties. Uh, I don't know if anybody has anything they'd like to volunteer for. If you can email me, if not, I, I'd like to come up with my own list and I'll, I don't know if I can email it to you uh, prior to the meeting regarding these uh, sunshine laws or do I have to wait? Uh, I'm not sure how that works. But I would like to, you know, put a list of things together and, and put names to it and see if you're interested or not interested. Uh, can I email that, or do I have to present it, or, you know? What, what are you sending out? It's, it's just a correspondence. In other words, they, they, we talked about this uh, uh, last council meeting about having people assigned to certain uh, specific, you know, functions that are happening in the town so we get better updated and communicated with. Well, if you, I mean, if you're conducting town business, uh, you know, that is sunshine business. Um, so, I mean, you can certainly contact one uh, another council person but I don't know that you could you could start a uh, emailing to Gee. all the council people back and forth could could he oh. but he could email the, the entire council a list of the projects so yeah they, yeah the paint, no, painting no, no, that you could do but yeah. what you're talking about is getting you know getting in for, you know replies back and assigning and doing the actual assigning I don't think you could do that. I mean, I don't, I don't really have a problem with you just saying, here's 15 topics, be prepared to talk about who wants to do what at some meeting, that's okay. okay. But I don't think you're, you can then start saying, okay, you take this and have a discussion back and forth about, you know, actually conducting the business or appointing people for the committees. Okay, so I can, I can put out something out with, with topics. Just topics, yeah. And couldn't they, can, couldn't they individually respond to him? Yeah, I mean, individually you can. Okay. Uh, you, you know, you're not supposed to have more than... Uh, I'm just trying to shortcut the project yeah. so no, that no, I understand. You know, yeah. we, can, we can just keep trying to move on things. Uh, okay. Uh, excuse me, yes. just, just for the sake of openness, um, if, if the administration wants or needs help, I'm open to be like an IT interface since that's my background so. I, I was going to put you on that. thank you very much <laughs> well only because last year when we did the budget yeah. mm -hmm. there was I, a lot I of said. Yep. consolidation i thought okay oh, grant writer i'm sorry no i'll handle the golf <laughs> the what <laughs> what do you say you yeah. he'll handle the golf outings <laughs> that would be fun uh i put grant writer on here just not to lose track of it i'm going to look at tom's guy. letter <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we need to go to closed? Yes. Oh, we do? Yes. Okay. And Motion to close uh, open. Motion to close, close the, the open. open. Do we have to, don't we have to read it first? Yeah. We no, we're no, no, skipping that. Posted it. Oh. We posted it there. And out there. there. So all we have to do is put down the, uh, you add the topics, that's all. And the topics are uh, litigation, COA, and tax appeals. Do we have to close the uh, business agenda, so current business yeah, agenda? Or no? Okay. Well, I, well, we just go into close. Well, you can you can do it. I need to close it. No, you go into close, then you can make a motion to adjourn. So I okay. To close. As long as you can take a vote on the uh, on the motion. No, so, right may I have a motion yes. to go into closed session, please? So moved. Second. Now you have to read soon? Yep. And Councilman Calamari? Yes. Councilman Cassio? Yes. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. yes. Council President Bruno? Yes. 